on this Wednesday morning proudly proclaims that we are at Camp Hass. Let's hear it, everybody. There you go. 
As usual, a wonderful, spirited crowd greeting us here at Camp Hask. We are outdoors on this beautiful campus and having an absolutely wonderful time already here at Camp Hask. I can't let you in on all the wonderful things we did before this show, but you'll be able to listen for the next three hours and hear how incredible things are at Camp Hask during the show. Now, a couple of things. First of all, first shout out, uh, right away, a shout out to MIH, the incredible group of MIH. Rabbi Michelle tells me, Reb Judah says that this is one of the most unique and incredible groups in Camp Hask history. They make it happen, and they really help make uh, this radio show happen. Yeah. Um, not sure about the weather and all those different things, all those different factors, and they made sure to get us set up properly here today, so I thank them. Uh, it's great to be back here at Hask. A lot of people have different uh, expressions and phrases and nicknames that they use for this incredible place. Uh, heaven on Earth, you've heard of that. Uh, you've heard uh, Hask referred to as the first place that Mashiach will come to, and people who say that say it seriously. Uh, you've heard people say it's the happiest place on earth. Anybody here think Hask is a happy place? <laughs> Look at this. A very enthusiastic group says that, in fact, it is a very happy place. Uh, Rabbi Judah Michelle, or Reb Judah as he's known during the summer and probably during the year as well, is the uh, executive director of Camp Hask. He's been on our program many, many times. And he essentially is our host and our co-host here as the radio show goes for this JM in the AM Wednesday. Reb Judah, let's have a nice round of applause for Reb Judah. Come on. Come on, everybody. Oh, longer than that. Let's keep going. Keep going with a great round of applause. Never ending. My gosh, Reb Judah, this can go on for hours, it seems. <laughs> How are you? Uh, good morning. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, everyone's so enthusiastic when you get introduced. I'm jealous. I'm jealous of the way they react to you. My gosh. <laughs> Incredible. How do you have so many fads, Reb Judah? What's the secret? We give out stuff. That, that's a, give out that's stuff all, and they think it's I, all about the swag? That's and, it? And they think I decide when we what we have for dessert around here. <laughs> so as long as you keep that impression going, you're going to be the exactly. hero of Camp Hash. Ice cream. Oh, unbelievable. Anyway, I hold in my hand, look at this ZK with our video camera. I hold in my hand the unofficial, I think we have to say this is unofficial, right? The unofficial has calendar. It doesn't have all the surprises. Ah. So this is unofficial, but it is, in fact, the uh, the publicly released Hass calendar for 2015 with all the great activities and all the different and wonderful days that are going on here at Hask uh, to make things exciting and, uh, and fantastic for all the campers. A lot of great things on it. In fact, I was uh, informed when I got to camp that I missed an incredible Sunday when it was Harry Potter Day. Did you guys have a good time on Harry Potter Day? Harry Potter and Reb Judah getting tremendous rounds of applause so far. Uh, then it says here that Monday night was sports night. Was there a sports night here Monday night? How did that work out? Was that good? It was great. Uri Butler gave me the thumbs up. He says that the sports night was incredible. Look at this. We have other campers also giving the thumbs up. So they obviously liked it. On Since we're doing this on Tuesday afternoon, are they aware of the fact? Is it up here? Are you guys aware of the fact that there'll be a candy land tonight? Yeah. Are you cheering for the programming here at Hask, or are you cheering for the candy? Which one? I don't know. I have a feeling you're cheering it too for the early candy. To program to to mention to any dentists out there who would <laughs> yeah. like to sponsor. The dentists are Candyland back. Candyland Day next summer. Well, they're back in the city, just waiting for these campers to get back. Oh, they could that sponsor they, it. We could have Candyland Day. They could. Like but the the fear is if it's dentists we sponsors Candyland, it'll all be like sugar-free candy, and that would ruin everything, Rub Judah. Obviously. Um, you know, I met so many people already. You, I, I saw Tamar Landsman. She's here. Yeah, she's she gets a special shout-out. I saw Gabe Rosenfeld. Was it Gabe? Gabe was here. Gabe Rosenfeld. I saw him earlier. I saw Hanan Strassman, who revealed to me, listen to this. You ready for this? Ten years he's at Camp Hask. Rip Judah, didn't you think at some point he'd have enough in his place? <laughs> Come on. Around here, so for some of the head staff, ten years is still the new guy. He's a rookie, huh? Yeah. Oh, there he is. There's Hanan. He said to me, and he, he alluded to what you just said, that 10 is nothing in this place. That's what he said. He said 10 is practically, you know. ZK, which microphone should Hanan pick up? Which one do you want him to use? You want the wireless? Hanan, 10 years. You think you're a big shot. Everyone here says you're a rookie, Hanan Strassman. They're both right. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many different positions have you held in Camp Hass? Three. What are they? I started off as a counselor, then I was on rec, and now I'm a division head. Wow. So which is the best job of the three? Counselor. The, that's the best job? <laughs> the best. It might be the hardest of the three, you know. Maybe, but still the best. Unbelievable. Uh, and how many campers did you have in your bunk at that time? I had actually four different bunks. One, A different one each summer. 
despite my requesting the same one. So what was summer. the average number of campers in the bunk? Uh, every summer we had four. You had four campers. Wow. Are you still in touch with some of those campers? Yeah, a lot of them are still here. Really? Where's Dovin Markowitz? Hey, Dov. Hey! There we go. Dovin, tell me how amazing a counselor Hanan Strassman was years and years ago. I need to know. Come on over here, Dovin. Here's Dovin. Dovin, how are you? Good. Welcome us to Camp Pass. Please, welcome us. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> um, um, years ago, when I was small, when I was a baby, yeah. she had me like, when I was small. All my camp, my Chanel's last night the best. And all the camp was doing great. I really love camp. Nativity is good. Everything is the best. Wow. And the Chanel was doing like nice boy. We like him. <laughs> <laughs> the, the camp likes all the, the camp campers. We like the counselors. All the, the Chanel is, is very good with helping the camp to run with it. But that Hanan is really amazing, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. I mean. Thank you so much for everything. Right. So much. For Hanan dominating the analysis here. Thank you here. so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. All right, who else do we have here? Rabjud is calling up somebody else here in the early part of our show. Who is this? Thank you. Lipa. Is this Lipa? Yes. How are you, Lipa? Come, Lipa. Are you the you. Lipa we always hear about? You're the famous Lipa? <laughs> The original. This is the original. Yeah, Lipa. This is the original. That's that I, guy Lipa Schmelzer. Well, he's he's on his coattails. He's trying to he's trying to get a bump off of his radio. That's what's happening. He's looking for some PR. Some seagull. Hey, how are you? I have good news. You. Good news. What is it? What's the good news? I went to all the concerts. I saw you on the stage. Wait a second. You've been to every Hass concert? Yes, I, I, I saw you. It's concerts on. On stage. Were you at the one this past January? Yes. What was your favorite part of that concert? I liked it with most singers. I liked the most. Most of the singers you liked. Me too. I liked most of the yeah, singers. Right. Which one you like? Rev Rev Judah, what do you think? Most of them were the good. Best? <laughs> <laughs> I would really get myself in trouble if I start playing like the who you like. You can tell us who like you like the singer. best. Which one like the, the best singer in the world? The best singer in the entire world. David you know, we only have a three-hour... David, David Amalek was David the best Amalek. singer in the, the entire world? I tell you... I will need to tell you... You don't believe your eyes. Excuse me? I don't believe your eyes. I tell you what... It was Uncle Mitzvah. All right. Mahmoud David. No, no, no. I have to read. Yeah. There you go. Which one? That's a Four That's very a high quality That's acts. That's a lineup. Four very high quality acts cited as the best to ever appear on the Hass Day. You know, we've had good crowds in the past, but my gosh, we're at the early part of the show in this yeah. place. This is building like crazy. Oh, look at this. Shout out to Day Camp and Day Care. Hey, Day, Day Camp. Care. Welcome, Hello. Day Camp. Well, Rip Judah. I thought it would take a couple of hours before this gentleman would agree to come on the air with us. I thought we'd have to really entice him and beg him to appear on the radio with us. But look at this. Just a few minutes Wait, into the show. Are we on the air? Yeah, we're on the air already. Oh, no way. He's, he's, we're we're gonna about to go on the air. Uh, can we save you for up. later? Let's start or sure? it up right now. Uh, what should we do? Let's start it up right now. What do you think? Ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? Are you ready for a big ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Camp House, yeah! you guys. All right. <laughs> For those of you who don't recognize the voice, that's a legendary Uri Butler. Mm -hmm. There he is. So, Uri, how are you, sir? Thank God, man. Isn't it great, man, that I'm back, man, here in Camp Ask Man? Yes, buddy. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful, buddy, that I'm back here in Camp <laughs> Ask, buddy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I love my counselors. And wait, wait, wait. Do you, what are your counselors' names this summer? We have Dovey. We have uh, Sivan. We have Jeremy. Uh, where's A time? Oh, oh. He's okay. off today? Yeah, 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 he's off. Did he know that we were showing <laughs> up at the show? No. Uh, otherwise, he wouldn't have taken a day yeah. off. Had a and then we have Fajah Yaish from All the right, Shiva Boys Yaish. Choir. Holy cow, imagine that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I think the YBC is going to come for real in the Shiva Boys Choir. going to be at the Camp Hass this summer. Oh, are they planning on being here this summer? But Rip, Judah, Rip, Rip Judah's not giving away any Come on, buddy. Come on. I should say something. Says <laughs> says <laughs> says <laughs> yeah. So that's what I mean. And so... Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, when is Has 28 coming out? That's a very good question. Can you tell me, please? I wish I knew myself. You know, I'm question. usually the last to know, Uri. You usually are yeah? telling me Hask news. Uh huh. I'm usually the last guy to know. Well, hold on. You guys having a great summer? Yeah! <laughs> me too. That's good. 
But what else should I say? Uh, well, I don't know. You, you know. We thought you had a writer. Or what? Isn't there somebody who does your writing for you? Let's see. I like uh, Reb Jew Michelle. Yeah. All right. I like the Hot Cell crew. Hot Cell is oh, in yeah. the infirmary. Nice. Remember the days when I you us here. Remember the days when you were part of the Hatsala crew? Yes. Yeah, those were the days. <laughs> yeah. I like I like that my friend uh Jonathan Scar. Yes, Jonathan Scar. <laughs> He's a great Thank man. You. Thank huh? you, Jonathan. Yes, call I know either. So what, what do I say now? We could do That's three hours of shadow. We could do. We, we could, could just do. Sit here and we could just walk around and tell everybody's name. And everybody Uri, as clap. far as we're concerned, yes. That's, That's I mean, what we do here. Uh, anything else you want to tell us? It's yes, a, yes, yes. Go ahead, sir. Well, I like I like Chesky Rubin. Yes. What Chesky is Chesky Rubin. Rubin doing, Camp? Well, he's just. Chesky Rubin's my chavrusa. He's oh. A, he's oh, yeah. He's, he, yeah. He's a bunk mate of Uri's. Mm -hmm. The division mate. Very nice. <laughs> yeah. And uh, from Brooklyn. Actually, we are fine. Wonderful yeah. Guy. All right. Well, let me tell you something. I love Reb Jude Michelle. Oh, that's great. Thank you. The Jude guy Michelle. knows how to hold on to that Jude microphone. Michelle. <laughs> Jude Michelle, what is, why was he going to come here? Yeah, yeah Jude Michelle. Is, say, don't put me on the spot or anything like that. When was the last time they were here? Well, a few years ago. Mm. Who was the most recent Jewish music performer to be here? Well, Ellie Gerstner. When? Okay. It's my after visiting day. He was here on visiting day. No, no, he wasn't. We, we are where our thoughts are. Right. We, where our machshavos <laughs> are, that's where we are transported. Yeah. So, Ellie Gerstner is here, like right now. <laughs> At the moment, concurrently, <laughs> as has twenty eight is taking. But one second, also. one second. But was there was there musical entertainment here on Yehuda visiting Green day? was here. He was here. Yes. Yeah, we had David Ziff playing with Yehuda, Yehuda Green. Good. Uh, yeah. Baruch Levine played with Uncle us. Uncle Moishi. Great. Uncle Moishi came. They were all here visiting day. No. We no, had, no. 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 Oh, no. No. This past couple weeks. Very nice. We had an unbelievable in house. Band. Jewish We've music plays a, a very time. important role in the summer day program here at yeah. That's for sure. Listen, when is Has 29 going to start? I don't know. You, uh, do you know the date that's for Has 29? That's a good question. Do you know? Someone told me it's January 10th. Is that true or not? Is it January 10th, guys? Save Maybe you know? Date. Whenever the date is, save that date. Exactly. Okay, okay. Save that okay. date. I know. Save that day. Uh, okay. Harry Butler, ladies and gentlemen. I want to tell you. I want to tell you, Lachlan, so you're in the yep. band. I'm the man, thank you. Not the seagull. I appreciate it. Just turned 415. It's the concert by Nachas. You know that? What happened? Na Nachas is coming here. Oh, when's Nachas coming here? Uh, 415 in the gym. 415 today? Yeah. Holy yeah. cow. <laughs> Reb Judah, rumors Yiddish spread very Yiddish quickly Yiddish here. Yeah, exactly. He is. Rumors spread very you know, quickly I here. I love you. Obviously, Scott is the best. Bada boom. Okay. Well, we had a great session <laughs> with Ari <laughs> Butler. Thank you, Ari. Amazing, that man. He's incredible. How many years do you think he's been in Hask? A while, huh? <laughs> it's been a few summers. Uh, we're live at uh, Camp Hask, everybody, with wonderful hosts, as usual. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you're at the website, check out, or if you're on the web, rather, check out NahumSiegel.com. The video is up, and you can see everything that's been going on here uh, so far and everything that's uh, to come. And uh, Reb Judah Michelle is going to continue with us. Uh, here at uh, JM in the AM. So it's a Wednesday morning. We're taking a break from everything that's going on in this world. There's a lot of things happening. Deals with Iran and all this stuff that's dominating the news. We're breaking for a Wednesday show here to um, uh, enjoy some of the uh, wonderful people up at Camp Hask and report to you from this amazing place. We'll do something from the Maccabees and come back with more. This is a JM in the AM Wednesday, and you're listening to 91.1 FM, 90.1 FM in the Catskills. Rockland County at 91.9 on the FM dial and around the world on the web, jam and the AM dot ORG. <laughs> Sabi 
משתחווים ומודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך הוא ואנחנו קוראים ומשתחווים ומשתחווים מודים לפני מלך מלכי המלכים הקדוש ברוך with the Maccabees. That's Aleinu L'Shabeach. Wednesday morning, we are at Camp Hask on a Tuesday afternoon. As usual, the weather's holding up for us. Imagine that. Um, here we are in the uh, beautiful campus. Everybody here at Camp Hask greeting us so nice. Did everybody give a nice greeting to ZK? Did everybody say hi to ZK behind the camera? Come on. Let's hear it for ZK behind the camera. Doing a remarkable job as usual. How can we hit the road at JMDM without ZK? Hey, Tamar Landsman is here. Could you imagine? I'm walking through camp with the beautiful Stacy Siegel, <laughs> and we stumble upon the uh, fantastic Tamar Landsman of Teaneck, New Jersey. How are you, Tamar? Good. Thank God. Good to be here. How many years have you been at Hask? This is my second summer here. All right. Second year. How's it going so far? Amazing. The Amazing. summer of 2015 will go down as one of the great ones, you're saying? Most definitely. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> now, you have a uh, camper to your right. Am I correct? I do. Now, Esther. who is this? This is Esther Badalova. Yeah. Esther, how are you? Yeah, fine. How's Tamara as a counselor? Uh, so Tamara, uh, Tamara's great. Tamara's amazing. That's funny. We also think Tamara's great and amazing. I know. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> yeah. What's your favorite part of Camp Hask? Uh, I love swimming. Yeah. Uh, and I do walking. Uh, Any other things you enjoy here? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, you like roller skating? Yeah, more skating. Yeah. Uh, uh, bike riding. Uh, uh, bike riding. They have all those activities here? All of that. Yeah. My gosh. <laughs> boy, oh boy. <laughs> um, how many years have you been here, Esther? Uh, 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 one week. That's it? Yeah. Have you been here before? Or yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. A lot of summers or yeah. just one a long, long time? Yeah, a lot of time. Boy, so you've seen Hess grow into an unbelievable camp, huh? Yeah. A lot of people here now, huh? Yeah, they are. <laughs> they certainly <laughs> are. Uh, where do you live, Esther? Uh, Brooklyn. I'm in uh, New York. Do you want to go back to Brooklyn already or you want to stay here for a while? Maybe. Uh, I want to stay here for a while. You want to stay in Hess the whole year, old? Yes. Tamar, you have plans to stay here the entire year? <laughs> the entire year, Esther? I do. The whole year? Oh, yeah, yeah. She wants yeah, to spend the great. entire year at Hask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Should boy. we stay together? Okay. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> How does it work for someone like you, Tamar? Are you uh, with the same campers the entire summer? Because I know that there's some that come to camp for a couple of weeks and others who are on different schedules. Do you have the same campers the whole summer? There's a bunk in my division, in the Adidam division, the oldest one. It's rotating gaps. Some campers stay for two weeks and, and leave. But um, most of the campers and has to stay the entire summer. Right. So I know it's your second year, but what was your first impression when you got here the first time? Last year in the yeah. beginning, I it was it was very confusing. <laughs> I I didn't know the ropes, but thank God I had the veteran counselors with me, and they showed me um, how to do everything, and that's what inspired me to come back and teach the rookie counselors the ropes. <laughs> oh, so you were ready to teach, huh? <laughs> well, it's yeah. very nice. Yeah. What, what what have been some of the highlights here so far this summer? We hear that there's something. They're saying new here every single day, they claim. Every single day. <laughs> There's excitement here every single day. <laughs> All the time. Never a dull moment in Hask. What were some of the highlights? Anything that uh, struck your fancy that was really uh, something that the kids enjoyed tremendously? Esther, what was your favorite thing? Uh, my uh, uh, my uh, 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 favorite thing is uh, dancing. Dancing? Ooh. Yeah. You like the concerts? I did a concert. Who yeah. was, the, who was uh, here for your concert, uh, uh, Esther? I mean, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Chucky. Uh, Jakob Schwecki was here? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Boy, you guys keep all the good acts a secret, I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> was what, he here? When was Jakob Schwecki here? A couple of nights ago? Yeah. <laughs> Any, anybody <laughs> else who you enjoyed? Was Baruch Levine here? Yeah. Yeah. Here, yeah. yeah. And Uncle yeah. Moishi. Uncle Moishi. Yeah. Yeah. We love the concert. I heard Jakob Schwecki was here dressed up as Baruch Levine. That's what I was told. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Is that what happened? Yeah. Well, let's yeah. hear it for Tamar Landsman and Esther Badalova, everybody. A wonderful counselor and camper combination. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're here at Camp Hask as we broadcast from what I consider to be the, uh, the center of the campus. I don't think geographically it is, but it seems to be the center of all the activity here. What are you doing? And we always have a wonderful time when we visit here. Um... Do we have more? We have more people stopping by. We have uh, Gabriella, Gabriella, and uh, Feige. Am I right? Is it Gabriella Levine, Levine, Gabriella Levine? I mean Levine, and Feige, Bukretsky, Bukoretsky. Is that correct? Wow! Can't believe I got that. Uh, welcome, ladies. How are you? Good. How are you? Gabriella, where are you from? Woodmere. All right. A shout out for Woodmere. Woodmere has sent their best to work at Camp Hask this summer. Is that true, by the way? Are there more people from Woodmere here or just you? There are more? Loads. Very. Really? <laughs> There's that many, huh? Yeah. Very nice. Uh, so the Five Towns community contributes greatly to the Camp Hask experience. How many years have you been here? This is my second. And how's it going so far? It's really great. I can't complain. And uh, do you have the same uh, campers for the entire summer? No. Last summer I was a rotator and this summer I'm a counselor. All right. And... Yeah. How is got how is uh, Feige so far? Is she a good camper? Yes. She's amazing. She's an amazing camper. Feige, do you hear this? You're being called an amazing camper. Look at you. You're blushing practically from all these compliments from your counselor. What's your favorite? Where are you from, by the way? Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn. And what's your uh, favorite part of camp? Everything. Like, there's got to be one or two things that you like most, no? I love everything. Is there one thing that you really, really love? What's your I favorite? That if activity? you were trying to convince somebody to come to Camp Hask, you'd say, you know, you got to come here because of this. What I would it love be? love swimming and art. There you go. Anybody who heads the swimming and art departments, you just got a tremendous shout out from Feige. I can tell you that much. Uh, I assume you get a tremendous amount of cooperation from all the different department heads, like swimming and art and all these different. Uh, they help out the counselors, I guess. Or you help yeah, them in terms of getting definitely. the activities done? It can't be the easiest thing, right? It's definitely not the easiest thing, but it's the most worthwhile, like, participating with your campers. Very nice. Well, it's great to see you guys. Continue to have a wonderful summer, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. That's Gabriella Levine and Feige uh, Bukoretsky from Brooklyn, New York. We're meeting some amazing uh, counselors and campers.
We're at Camp Hask, everybody. An amazing visit, because it's always an amazing visit. Keep it here at JM in the AM as we continue with our three weeks format and continue on a Wednesday morning from Camp Hask. <laughs> Six thirteen. We're live at Camp Hask. Actually, we're uh, here on a Tuesday at Camp Hask, but you're hearing it Wednesday morning. So a couple of things. First of all, Miriam Wallach has to be on the air for this story. Get her a microphone for a second. Uh, Miriam Wallach's here, general manager of the Nachum Siegel Network. Jamie Turkel, whose name used to be Jamie Rohr, is here. She's taking care of all of our social media. I introduced ZK. You met ZK, right? Did you meet him already? You didn't meet him? After this interview, you have to make sure you go over and say hi. And um, where is uh, Miriam? To your left. So listen to this. A gentleman named Yoni Shear. You probably also know his parents from Camp Marosha from 100 years ago. But anyway. Uh, Yoni, Sh David and Bonnie, you don't know? You know you and I are not the same age. I know. Very funny. Uh, I know. I'm 100 years old. But anyway. Um, so he came over and mentioned that he's uh, Bonnie and David's son. Nice guy. I remember the Shear family from years ago. Such nice people. Um, so he says that they had su what day was superhero day, guys? What day was was there a superhero day yet? It when was, was the it? Tenth. The tenth. So he goes over to his camper, Arye Lab. What's Arye Lab's last name? He goes over to Arye Lab. What's the last name? Gelbine. He goes over to Arye Lab and says, "Who's your favorite superhero?" And Arye Lab says, "Rabbi Judah Michelle." Nachum Siegel. No! <laughs> 
Shoot, I'm going to lose my job for not. Ari Lave, I got to give him, someone give him a special gift. Did we oh, bring along? Sure. Did we bring along anything of here? Of course I did. He gets a special gift. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I knew that story would drive her nuts. Uh, I want to say hi to uh, Neil Bodner. Neil Bodner's here at Camp Pass. Where's Neil? Probably busy working knowing about Neil. I saw Neil earlier. Hey, Nahama Fast came over. Nahama Fast is here this summer. All right. We love the Fast family. We've been talking a lot about her father over the last couple of days. Uh, who else did I want to say hi to? Jeremy Strauss, I'm told, is tuned into the show. Want to say hi to Jeremy? He's in Israel right now. He's tuned into the show. We want to say hi to him. Jeremy's nephew introduced himself to me earlier. What was his first name? Gabe Rosenfeld? No, yeah, Gabe's his Kobe nephew. Also. What? Kobe no. Yeah. Elliot's son was who? Tzvi oh, Tzvi. Thank you. Tzvi Strauss. Was, where's Tzvi? Hey, there he is, Tzvi Strauss. I knew his father when his father looked exactly like Tzvi. <laughs> My gosh, every time I show up here of Judah, I get older and older. How does that happen like that? I'd like to know. Anyway, we have guests. I know, I know. i got to stop focusing on, on my past and get to our special guests. First of all, Shoshi Zamek is here. Talk about a JM and the AM family member. Here she is, Shoshi Zamek. How many years are you here already? Five years? Oh, my God. Shoshi. Good morning, Shoshi. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> You're one of the few people who can play along with the good morning routine because you, you get what we're doing here. Good morning. <laughs> so you're here five years. Yeah. What's your job this summer? I'm the communications coordinator. Oh, wow, that sounds important. We could use a communications coordinator. Someone hire me one immediately. Uh, <laughs> so what do you what do you do here on a daily basis? What do you what's the what's the focus of your work here at Cat? I do a lot of things. I can imagine. Um, I answer phones. Mm. I communicate with parents and ah. staff members, and a lot of other things. Parents must. Uh, well, how do I put this? Let's see. Because a lot of parents in general are very concerned about their kids in summer camp, you can imagine. And uh, for a lot of parents in situations that, um, that, uh, that they're in, they, you know, for the f they, may be say they may be saying goodbye to their kids for the very first time for a summer. You may be speaking to a lot of first-time parents with the Hask yeah, experience. Yeah, a lot of nervous parents, but yeah. we, we reassure them. And they're doing great. their kids are doing great here. All right, Baruch Hashem. By the way, I saw your parents recently. They're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> so I can give you that report. Uh, with us as well, we've got the Yaakov Bertram. Where's Yaakov? Hey there, Yaakov. And we've Hi. got Roni Gottlieb of Edison, New Jersey. How are you, Roni? Good. How are how you? How are things down in Edison? They're good. Now, someone told me that Yaakov Bertram participated in the Camp Marathon. Is that accurate? True. That is true. When was this Camp Marathon? A few days ago? What do you have to do during the marathon? You have to run until the finish line. Mm. How far is that finish line from the starting line? If you tell me a couple of feet, I'd like to participate. <laughs> really, really far very, away. Very <laughs> far away. <laughs> was it a lot of fun? Yeah. Did you think, because it was such a long run, did you think, oh, my gosh, I may not finish this thing? Yeah. And what happened? You persevered, huh? Yep. You made it. You did it. Let's hear it, everybody. Let's hear it for Yako. How many campers finished the Hask Marathon? Do we know? A lot of them did? Baruch Hashem. Hmm. Oh, he's calculating how many years he's done it? Four years. You've been doing the marathon now for four years. Amazing. Yeah. Roni, this is your camper? Yeah. How did he prepare for the marathon? What was the rigorous uh, preparation like? Kept on running. Kept on, he kept on running. <laughs> did you have to supervise a special diet? Yeah. <laughs> did, he, did he stay away from the uh, you from the growth hormones and all that other stuff that yeah, you're not yeah. supposed to take? Of course. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Roni's much better than 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 me. Oh, Roni's a better runner than you are? Yeah, don't worry. It's, you can see him, I promise. All right. Very nice. Well, to both of you, I say thank you. And congratulations, Jacob Bertram and Roni Gottlieb. Let's hear it, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody want to say hi to, Roni? Um, I guess my family at home. Knowing your neighborhood, you probably have every person you know listening to this show, I would bet. Yeah. They're but addicted to it in Edison, New Jersey. They just keep listening. Yeah. They wish we were on for four hours a day. 100%. Isn't that unbelievable? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, from their mouth to God's ears. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Oh, no, we're going to be speaking to one of the MIHers. 
It's gonna have to be a, a two MIHs, and we have to very. It's gonna have to be a very quick conversation. You know why? Because they're so busy doing things around camp, they probably don't have more than sixty or maybe uh, ninety seconds to spend with us. I would bet. Isaac Rosen is Colel and MIH. Where's Isaac? Right here. Where are you from? Uh, five Towns. All right. Sarah to five Towns getting a lot of recognition here today here at Camp Pass. Where's Joe Nitsani? What's up, guys? How are you, Joe? <laughs> awesome. Is this your guys. first time on radio? Yeah, it is. What is your job here in camp? I'm supposed to be a counselor. <laughs> <laughs> He's supposedly a counselor. <laughs> what is your division head thinking of? <laughs> Do they agree with you or not? Let's not ask him. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, where are you from, by the way, Joe? Great Neck. Great Neck, New York. Let's hear it yeah. for Great Neck. Does Great Neck send a lot of great staff members to Camp Hask or not? Or are you the only one? I don't think they're going to hire anyone else. Now, what's they experienced you, huh? <laughs> oh, boy. All right. So MIH stands for Make It Happen, Isaac Rosen. Make It Happen, yeah. What are some of the things you've made happen today? Um, what are some of the things you were involved with today? I'm, I'm really, it's mainly, it's mainly colo and then in the afternoon, ah. take care of like a day camper. So, And that's your job? Yeah. And how's that going so far? It's great. This, is my, this is my third year here. Very nice. How many people are in the Colo here? Uh, six. Very nice. One of, one of them is, is real Boim. He's like the Roche Colo. Wow. Where is he? He's, he's, he's hiding the Boim. <laughs> There's a unique way of calling him, I see. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So uh, Colo half the day, MIH the other half, yeah. dealing, with the day <laughs> dealing with the day campers when necessary. Sounds like you're a jack of all trade, Mr. Rosen. Uh, not really. It's I just fell into this position. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Are you enjoying the camp this so far? I so? love it. Uh, I, I was doing an internship before, and I, I couldn't I couldn't hold back, so I had to get back. You mean an internship like in an office or something like that? Yeah, 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 something like that. You really. thought you'd enjoy that more than being at Camp Ash? Uh, parents, parents. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Hope they're not listening. <laughs> Joe Nitsani, how's it going so far as a counselor? I love it. Love Your reputation is amazing. You see what people say about you. <laughs> they're probably lying. <laughs> is this your camper over here? Yeah, Raziel, say hi. Hi. How's it going so far? Raziel, tell me how it's going. Good. You're enjoying the summer? Yeah. Is Joe a good counselor? Yeah! Whoa! <laughs> That's one enthusiastic uh, approbation, to say the least. Uh, Joe, is this your first year here? Second. Second year? Yeah. Wow. You came last year, they decided you should come back, and you came said you should come back. They made two mistakes. Amazing, I'll <laughs> tell you. Uh, and what, what, forget about the campers. What's your favorite day of the camp, uh, camping season so far? Favorite day so far? Yeah, your favorite day so far. Like maybe the day when the world's most popular Jewish radio show came to camp. Would that be the day, Joe? You want, you want that? You want me to say that <laughs> answer? Exactly. Menachem Siegel came. There you made go. my day. There you go. <laughs> Teach him my name and then we'll move on. <laughs> so Joe yeah. says the number one day in camp so far. What's today? 13th, 14th, what's today? Something like that. So far, with all these days that have happened at Camp Pass, the number one day is the day that JM and the AM showed up to Camp Pass. Unbelievable. Not a question. Not a question. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, Joe, continued good luck. What's your camper's name over here? Raziel, say hi. Raziel. Hi. Dr. Benji Epstein's son. Thank you, Raziel. <laughs> you have an amazing father. Do you know that, Raziel? We're going to meet him again later on. Man's incredible. Thank you, folks. Wow. I feel like I've done a whole three-hour show in the first hour. Holy cow. Meeting all the great people at Hask. What an incredible experience. Oh, by the way, Camp Director Moshe Chaim Levin was uh, here earlier. He had to leave, but he is uh, somebody who uh, prides himself on being the um, Camp Director. And anybody who's familiar with Camp Hask knows what that inside joke is all about. Um, I'm told that Chayla and Malia are here. Are they both here? Yep. Yeah. Uh, this is this is uh, who's who. <laughs> you are. I'm Malia. Malia, how are you? Is it Gladder? Yes. Malia Gladder of Teaneck, New Jersey. Let's hear it for Bergen County, Woo! everybody. <laughs> Why does Teaneck send so many amazing people to Camp Hask each year? I'd like to know. What is it about Teaneck that they feel that? Uh, a kinship to Camp Pass. You know the answer to that? It's just terrific. I don't know. So Teaneck has terrific people, and terrific people end up going to Camp Pass. That's the way it is. That's how it works. How many yeah. years have you been here? I've been here two years. Now. And how's it going so far? Amazing. This is the most Thank incredible God. summer ever? Most incredible. Fantastic. Every day, day after day? I mean, it's hard, but it's amazing. How so many, worth it. How many campers do you have? Um, I have three campers. How are they doing so far this summer? 
They're good. Ask Kyla. Kyla, is yeah. it Nadler? Yeah. Kyla Nadler lives where? Where do you live during the year? Brooklyn. Year? In Brooklyn, New York. Kyla Nadler is here, everybody, and she's saying hi to all of us. Yes, we can have a nice round of applause for Kyla. Come on. <laughs> Kyla, have you had any uh, favorite days in camp so far? Um, the day that the radio guy showed up, was that a good one? I'll give you that as an answer. Excuse me? <laughs> I'll give you that as an answer. You're going to give me another answer? But but I like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, what answer do you have for me? Go ahead. I have Shabbos. Oh, Shabbos beats out the visit of Jam in the AM for good reason. <laughs> what is Shabbos like here in Camp Pass, Kyla? It's amazing. What do, you do, what do you do on Shabbos? Yeah. We schmooze on Shidduch Lane, right? Yeah. And we do you have Shabbos parties? Yeah. Very nice. And we do Yaakov Yat and birthday parties. Hey, a birthday parties also. <laughs> Shabbos parties and birthday parties. Anything else? Well, just this week. I understand. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> Can't have birthdays all the time. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Are there a lot of Zmiros here on Shabbos? Mm -hmm. How many minutes of Zmiros are there on Shabbos at Camp like, Pass? A it, lot. It just keeps going on yeah. and on? Those yeah. counselors can't stop singing, can yeah. they? They love singing. They love singing. And the campers get into it? Yep. What's your favorite Shabbos song? Do you have one? Not really. Not one favorite, huh? I'm also a little bit scared. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm also thinking about my favorite Shabbos yeah. song. I have like a bunch tied for first, you know what I mean? You're in the same type of situation, uh -huh. huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. I know what you mean. It's hard to choose a favorite Shabbos song. Yeah. But I don't mean to get sidetracked. Uh, Malia, uh, anybody you want to say hi to out there in Teaneck, New Jersey? Because I'm told that Teaneck listens to this show all three hours, all five days a week. That's what I'm told. I'll say hi to my family. All right. Hey, guys. The Gladders. The Gladders. All right. Good people? Amazing. They miss you a lot? I hope so. Do you write to them? <laughs> no. You don't write at all? No I'll emails, call. anything? Eh. Once in a while? My day off, I see them. There you go. Good <laughs> enough. <laughs> Let's hear it from Maya and Chayala, everybody. Oh, thank you. Wow. Reb Judah told me I'd be meeting some incredible people this uh, this uh, year here at Camp Ask, but boy, unbelievable. All right, let's do this from Leif Tahar, and then we'll continue with more coming up. We are at Camp Ask on a Tuesday. You're listening Wednesday morning, taking a break from everything happening in this world to visit the happiest place on earth, and that's Camp Ask at JM in the AM. One, two, three, four. Baruch <laughs>
Dave Tahar does that selection entitled Baruch HaGever. Three weeks a cappella here at JM in the AM. We are at Hask. We're at the uh, amazing Camp Hask. Or my Avi Pollock is here. He's going to join us later. I'm told that David Lauer is here. He gets a shout out. I'm told that Miriam Golding. I saw Miriam earlier. Miriam Golding is here. A lot of wonderful people here in this uh, incredible camp. The division heads for the Rayim division are here. Before we introduce them, I want to wish a happy birthday to Yaakov Katzin. Happy birthday, Yaakov. <clears throat> I am told these are the two best division heads in the entire camp. That's what um, Rabbi Pollock and Dr. Uh, Yaish told me. That these are the two best division. I love getting them in trouble. <laughs> these are the two best <laughs> division heads in the entire camp. Hask. Tzvi Weiss is here. Tzvi, welcome to the show. Thank you. Where are you from? Staten Island originally. Staten Island, New York. All right, let's hear it for Staten Island. <laughs> and Michal, is it Parat Zipman? It is. How are you? Thank God. How are you? Where are you from? Neve Daniel. Oh, Neve Daniel. That's a little that, different. That trumps Staten <laughs> Island. Are you kidding? And the Five Towns and Tina. And do you know the ports? Yes. Yeah. Our, you know yeah, Dr. Port? I do. And our name, last names are similar, so we often, people wow. often mix us up. Oh, that's right. That's funny. I'm trying to think. Do we know anybody else in the Bay Danielle? Quickly. Come on. we got to play Jewish geography for it has. Do we know anybody else in the Bay Danielle? Or that's it? That's it. Who? Who do we know? Yes. The Hershorns? And you is Chaim Snow in the Bay Danielle? No, he's in. Where is he? I think he is in the Bay Danielle, if I'm not mistaken. Who? Is it Chaim Snow in the no, Bay Danielle? You know my aunt and uncle. Who's that? A fryman on the earth. That's your aunt and uncle? My aunt and uncle. I just dive in with them this past Shabbos. Yeah, you know they're amazing people. I know they're your neighbors. You know, you know they're man. incredible. Yes. They're wonderful folks. To me, I apologize. Dominating okay. conversation. <laughs> you can't compete with the Nevada now. She has an incredible aunt and uncle. What can I tell you? Did you see them when they were in Israel? Yes. How do you like that? Yes. I guessed, and I was right. Yes. Anyway, how many years have you been in Camp Hass, to be wise? This is my fourth summer. Fourth? Fourth summer. Wow. Yeah. The first three were so amazing, you decided to come back. Just couldn't stay away. I had to come back. It's incredible to me how many people come back year after year after year. Michal, how many years for you? I feel very old right now. Uh, Fifteen. How many? A lot. 15 years? Oh wow. The only wow. people that would that have longer stretches at Camp Pass than you would probably be a handful, right? Or am I wrong? Are there a uh, lot? There's a lot of good people. That are there a lot that have more than 15 years? Quite a few. A nice wow. handful. Which was the best summer of all those 15? Every summer gets better and better. Right. No, so there's nothing better than counselor summer. Those are the best, huh? Yeah. How many years have you been in division? Um, this is my 10th year as a division. Wow. Head. I'll tell you. What does the Ray in division mean? What is, what is it, an age group? Is it a section of camp? What does it mean? So it's a little bit different for the boys' campus and the girls' campus. Okay. I'll let Michal take the girls' campus. Right. On the boys' campus, uh, it's specifically for kids with autism. Wow. Yeah. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty exciting division. I mean, we have I think 55 campers or so, um, all with some type of diagnosis of either autism or some type of behavioral disorder. Uh, but it's really it's an amazing, an amazing division. Um, it's a very exciting, very fun division, and we have the best counselors. All right. At the risk of asking questions I shouldn't ask, I'll ask anyway. Be because of a what sounds like a special program for children with autism, uh, is there special training or different orientation that your counselors go through as compared to other people here at Hask? Um, yeah, I mean, I think for everyone here at Hask, we have a really comprehensive training program. But I think for the autism program, you need like another, you know, specialization training uh, when it comes to autism. So we train the counselors in what autism means and how to work with kids with autism, um, behavior modification, and we have a little bit of an enhanced training to be able to deal with those uh, those behaviors. And do you have any special training in this area, or it's something that you were able to acclimate to as you worked in this environment? Um, it's mostly most of my training actually came from here. Um, I started here on the behavior team, I'm working with the kids with autism and then transitioned into the division head role, um, you know, fusing that behavior training that I have into uh, into this role. Wow. You have a lot of rookie yep. counselors working for you or not? Uh, yeah, I have a bunch of rookie counselors, um, all amazing counselors over here. I see some of them right over here. Uh, they're great counselors, great guys. <laughs> None of them wanted to go home. Um. <laughs> you, never, you never know. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some of them do. <laughs> some of them may have changed their minds. Some of them may have changed. We, we're trying to keep them here. Try to, uh, you know, slash the tires or so. Not with the least. <laughs> nah, you wouldn't do anything like that. Uh, and then, uh, uh, Michal, 15 years. My gosh, tell me about Ray on Girls Campus. Um, Ray on Girls Campus is an age. It's not necessarily a um, uh, division with only so can autism. You tell us Our what age, age that would serve? Yeah, my youngest campus are 14 and my oldest are 21. So we're the teenage, we're the teenage division. Right. So we know what... Uh, 
We know what teenage years I, mean. It, teena- yes. <laughs> right? It's we, a dynamic. It has uh, a certain personality uh, collectively in the, uh, not just the Jewish world, but in the world in general. It's never Is it boring. like that in Camp Hask? Yes. Teenage girls are never boring. Um, and teenage girls in Camp Hask are also never boring. They're dynamic. They're fun. They're constantly evolving and changing. And uh, we get to evolve and change with them as they grow older. We get to, we get them when they're 14. So and in Hask, your counselors could turn to a camper and say, you're behaving like a teen. And they'd be <laughs> accurate. I hope they don't say that. But yes, they could say that. Our, our teenage campers uh, act like teenagers. Unbelievable. I'll tell you. And uh, how, many, how many campers are in each one of these divisions? Well, they have a lot more. We have 55 campers. Yeah, 55. Hara, yeah. I have 40. A lot more. You, that's a, that's yeah, a significant, a yeah. a very significant number. No, it's a significant. It's a forty teenage girls is a lot. Yeah, so, are you uh, kidding? Yeah, but it's not. Uh, yeah, but fifty-five, numbers. forty. To me, it sounds like you know, a large group that has to be taken care of. Simple as that. And it's a What's been the highlight of the summer so far, besides our visit? For me, every summer, it's really working with the counselors. I mean, I obviously love our campers, you know, to no end. But being able to see the the best of the best here come back and work every summer, and being able to you know help empower them and really grow into this role, that's the best part for me. Reb Judah, explain to me off the air why Hash continues to get the best of all the counselors out there, and that uh, you would agree that in terms uh, of no question. watching them in action, you're dealing with the greatest group No question. Group possible. Uh, no question. I mean, to even think to come here for the summer, you really have to be a special person. So. Amazing. Svi Weiss and Michal Porat Zidman. Let's hear it, everybody. Come on, a real round of applause. These are division heads, after all. Come on. These are division heads. Come on, longer, more. They deserve it. We have 19 years at Camp Hass collectively between these two. Come on, let's hear it for these two. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Uh, division heads at Camp Hask, amazing. Uh, an incredible first hour, wouldn't you agree? Wouldn't all of our listeners agree? An incredible first hour at America's one and only Jewish Moments in the morning radio program heard on listener sponsored WFMU East Orange, WMFU Mount Hope, Rockland County at 91.9 in the FM dial. Around the world on the web, jmnam.org. Hour number two from Hask and two other amazing counselors, I am told, are here. In fact, rumor has it, I'm not as firm with this rumor as I was with the division head rumor. But rumor has it that Rabbi Pollock and Dr. Yish have proclaimed that Josh Friedman and Rifka Goldmeyer are, in fact, the best counselors at Camp Hass this year. How do you like that? <laughs> That's what I've been... <laughs> Rabbi, Pollock, Rabbi Pollock is about to escort me to the gate of camp <laughs> and ask me to leave with all these rumors that I'm spreading. Josh, where are you from? West Hempstead, New York. West Hempstead, come on! <laughs> How come there's so many wonderful people in West Hempstead? Tell me, what is it about the neighborhood over there? I don't know. Well, we have we have an awesome rabbi, Rabbi Kellimer. Yeah. He's, he's he's amazing. An incredible man. A really incredible man. Has uh, he ever visited Hask? Hask? Has like he ever, has before? He, yeah. Has he, he ever visited here? I've never visited here before. No. Has he? Oh, has, has he? he? The rabbi. Ever I'm visited? not sure. I don't know. I'd like you to arrange with Rabbi Judah because Rabbi Kellimer is an amazing man. He should come visit Hask one day. It sounds good. I don't know. We got to Avi's from West Hempstead. Let's invite him now. Yes, we're going to invite him on the air. Tell him to make a day of it this summer at Camp Ask. Uh, isn't it a wonderful feeling when great rabbinic leaders show up to ask? I think it's great uh, giving their uh, I- I- giving their impressions of their visits here. It's just wonderful. Anyway, let's hear from West Hempstead, and uh, you are the counselor of how many campers? Uh, four campers. How are they doing? They are excellent. Remember when I spread this rumor that you're the best counselor in camp? That was a poll taken of those four campers. Nice. They were the ones who said that you were the best counselor here. Rifka, where are you from? Chicago. Chicago, Illinois. Come on, everybody. Who doesn't love Chicago? You don't love Chicago? <laughs> Someone admitting they don't love Chicago. You both love Chicago, I bet. Yeah, it's great. Um, how's the, are there other people from Chicago here? Have there been people in the past from Chicago? How did you learn about how incredible the Camp Hask experience is? Um, this year I'm one of 10 or 11, I think, from Chicago, really? if not more. Holy but God. there's always been... A few of us that Very come. Very nice. I'll tell you, how many campers do you have? Four. How are they doing so far? Thank God. Great. They may also be the ones who voted for you, I'm told, as best counselor in the entire camp. How do you like that? That must be, it must be a good feeling for you to know that you have campers who think so highly of you. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's right. Uh, <laughs> boy, you got some campers here who are cheering on. Um, so, uh, and how many years have you been here? This is the second summer? It's my third summer. It's your third summer already. You just yeah. keep coming back for more and more. Never going to leave. What is it that makes someone come back so often year after year? Um, the smiles on all the campers' faces, always having a good time. What was visiting day like, by the way? Did the parents have smiles on their faces? Yeah. They did. Yeah. They were happy the way things were going. 
We hope so. <laughs> they gave you a seal of approval. Yeah. Did you update them and tell them how unbelievably their kids have been doing during these first couple of weeks? Of course. Kids are always great. You gave them great Gotta, reports? Yeah. Some of the kids made progress, I'm sure, in certain areas, right? Yeah. They must have been thrilled. How about you, Josh? Did you speak to the parents and give them a, an update on what's been happening with their kids? Yeah, so um, visiting day actually is uh, it's next week, I think. Um, so, But we've been in touch with the parents, you know, um, all the time. So, yeah. Wait, there's been no formal visiting day here yet? <laughs> Can you imagine? I just assumed that visiting day was already. According to my uh, producer of this great show, the 19th of July is visiting day. You ready for it? Yep. There it is. There it is, the 19th of July. You guys ready for visiting day, yeah? yeah. I think that's this Sunday, by the way, Yeah. if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so you'll see the parents, you'll give them updates, and you'll uh, make them feel good about their kids. And Rivka, thank you for making me look good by making believe that last week <laughs> yeah, was visiting that day. Was I appreciate nice. that. Yeah. Amazing, this lady. All the Chicago people treat me nicely. I love it. Uh, Josh Friedman and Rivka Goldmeyer, everybody. Let's hear it. Thank you very much. Continued good luck this summer. All right. We'll start hour number two. Keep rolling here from Camp Hask. What an incredible and amazing visit so far. More coming up. Here's Yehuda Solomon at JM in the AM. Oh, 
We are at Camp Hask. Let's have a nice round of applause. Come on. You know, some people call Camp Hask the happiest place on earth. And I'm told that two of the people that are responsible for it being the happiest place on earth are sitting to my right. Let's have a round of applause for Batya Weiss, everybody. And how about a round of applause for S.D. Ellis? Why does everybody love the two of you so much, I'd like to know. What's going on here? Hi. Hello, um, how are you? I am good. How are you? <laughs> what is your job here at Camp Hask? What is um, the, why, why is it that you're associated with fun and games and so many wonderful things here? Our job in Camp Hask is to really create the camp experience for everyone here in Camp Hask. That's that, is, <laughs> that is our role here. Very nice. And how well you do it, I'm told you do it very well. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> what is your direct responsibility? What do you do on a regular basis? Um, we, have, we have a few different realms in which we work. The first one is we program for everyone who's older, above 21. We do their daily programming. So we do, they go to camp all day long. They don't go to school. And we program for them from after breakfast until dinner. We have programs for them all day long. They do things like art and cooking and nature and Music. things like that. Uh, so you are Music. the camp program director. <laughs> <laughs> when the campers are on their way to swimming, music, uh, a game of basketball, roller skating we heard about earlier, and all these yep. different things, you are the ones responsible for that. Yeah. No wonder everybody likes you so much. My gosh. <laughs> Yeah, we get a chance to also program for all of camp. This is how everyone knows us, is because on non-academic days... <laughs> this is really getting funny, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking and let everybody just keep cheering on for you. I'll tell you that much. Um, so, Batya and Esti are here. Um, all right, I, I mean, is it difficult to uh, come up with activities for everybody here at Has? Like, you know... I'd say it's a lot of fun. It is um, fun. You start off maybe with thinking of activities that you'd like, and then you can think of ways that the activity can be enjoyed by everyone. Um, and you consider different people's interests and likes. You know, we had Superhero Day on Friday. That was really an opportunity for everyone to, uh, to dress up and get into it. Um, and it's really just keeping that mindset for all of the activities and theme days that we have. Um, are, are all these, uh, and again, I don't know, uh, I don't know how to ask this question, but are all these activities adaptive? Are they... Are they adjusted so that yes. everybody can participate? That that must Absolutely. be that must yeah. be a task in and of itself. Yeah. We work that. very hard. Once we create a program, we work then within it to make sure that within whenever we have a food activity, we have multiple different options for what the food is because right. different people can eat different won't eat foods. Yeah, right. especially with like likes and dislikes, but also about dietary restrictions. Right. And we work very hard. Like we have a concept of having two planes for every activity. Where if something's happening on the ground, then we always make sure to have a higher plane of it happening as in we have a table or something like that to rest it on so that everybody no matter what height they need it to be at can participate in the activity you have to think of all this <laughs> stuff yeah yeah. But not only that, this is something that Batya was telling our team yesterday. But when we when we look at activities, it's not just about an end goal, something that you're trying to get to for the activity, but rather thinking about all the steps in the process and that process being about what it's about. If you think about the end, it's just what's the most efficient way to get this product. But that's not what it's about. It's about, it's like Batya said, opening up a container or rolling something out. And it doesn't have to look like the example that's on the table, right. but that whole sensory experience and getting to that, well, can that's you give the me process. A good example? that like is there something you could tell us that would uh, illustrate that for us sure do you want to talk about the rice, rice krispie oh, treats i mean last night we had an activity where it was sports night and we created baseballs from rice krispie treats and we like rolled it into we rolled marshmallow fluff and rice krispie treats into a ball and we um used pull and peel twizzlers on the outside to like make the the red lining in a baseball yes i'm familiar um, with it <laughs> 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 i'm familiar both with baseballs <laughs> and twizzlers <laughs> 
that's great. And, and in that, we were just, I, I was showing some of our staff and I was showing some of the counselors and the campers about all the different steps that are involved in there and all the different little accomplishments that you can have along the way of creating this baseball and all the right. different, like, steps. Um, and, like, watching, watching campers just try really, really hard in any of those steps is always an amazing thing. And, like, each step can be an activity for, for someone all along the way. Each, uh, each step can be an activity in and of itself. I wonder if any people. of the campers go home and propose to their parents that they should create a Rice Krispie Treat baseball at home. Like, I wonder if they if they take any of that home with them. It would be a fantastic idea. I know. You spread the fun around. And no the, reason why it has to end here. And their family would love it. Plus, they would see how they're able to do it. They're able yeah, to participate yeah. and, and okay. actually, in that case, lead an activity like that. Batya Weiss and SD Ellis are here, responsible for activities here and really the, the program here at Camp Hask, which is pretty amazing. Um, so when we think of adaptive, obviously some ob some obvious things come to mind, whether it be swimming, which you know has its own degree or level of adaptation. Um, but even I remember I remember being here once and seeing basketball courts that are you know with lower baskets for yeah. certain kids and basketball courts that have. Uh, um, hoops that automatically score the basket for you, that type of thing like this. There's different I don't know things. If we have that one. Oh, well, we, we have, that? We have I basketball know, I know, hoops I know you've that had swings and recreation equipment that's made for wheelchairs. Where yeah, they can actually yes, put yeah. wheelchairs and on, we top have, equipment uh, on top of them. And we have portable basketball hoops. So right. yeah. if you can't come to the basket, we bring the basket to you. So you can uh, make the shot, yeah. score the winning uh, point. Right. So a lot of that stuff has to be thought of in advance. and. And, yeah. and you have to figure out how it could apply to everybody. Has this been a great summer so far? It's been amazing. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> no questions. And, and what does that mean? When you say it's been a great summer, obviously part of that means your program's going well, but what else does it mean Thank for God. you? It means programs that are enjoyed by everyone. You know, yeah. it's not just about putting uh, putting together the program, but the program has to run smoothly and people have to be having fun along the way. And uh, it looks like, it seems like people have really been enjoying them and enjoying the programs. That's, I think, what's what counts. People are having fun. Well, I checked with Ryan Pollock and Dr. Yaish, and the two of you are the two most popular people in camp. How do you like that? <laughs> How do you like that designation, huh? Thank you, Batya Weiss and S.D. Ellis, everybody. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. We're visiting Camp Hask and having a blast doing it, I'll tell you that much. Meeting some great people. Wow. I've seen people with fan clubs before, but my gosh, the two of them, they've got a following, not just a fan club. David Lauer is here. Where's David Lauer? Right over here. How are you, sir? You look like a Lauer. How are you, <laughs> Thank sir? you, I think. Nice to see you. Yeah, that you is too. a compliment, trust me. Please send regards to your wonderful parents. 100% will do. How long have you been a counselor here at Camp Hass? This is my second summer. All right. Very good. You liked it so much you decided to come back again. Oh, it's the best place in the world. My gosh. <laughs> That's great. Just hearing it from everybody today, it's wonderful. Adam Steiglitz is here. Is Adam your camper? Adam is my camper. All right. How's Adam doing so far this year? Thank God. Unbelievable. Adam, where are you from? Lawrence in the Five Towns. The Five Towns! The Five Towns doesn't just send great counselors to Camp Hass. They send great campers to Camp Hass. <laughs> How do you like that, Five Towns? You're getting a big shout-out today. Adam, what's been the best day of camp so far this year? Meeting new friends. and counselors. Meeting new friends. That's a good answer. You get an opportunity to meet a lot of great people here, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, David, how's it going so far with Adam? Is he having a good summer? Oh, he's having the best time ever. His parents actually keep telling us how happy they are to see how happy he is. Oh, Baruch Hashem for that. You see a lot of growth, and now that you're a, a second-year guy, I could ask you this. You see a lot of growth in campers, not just summer to summer, but during the summer itself, right? 100% daily. They, they're able to learn things? that uh, Adam is learning new things constantly, daily. Very nice. Um, what else can I ask you? I could ask you what your favorite day of the summer has been so far. Favorite day of the summer? No such thing as a favorite day here. Every single day is amazing. I can tell my favorite part of Camp Pass, though. Please. Last summer, uh, for example, um, there was a, a wheelbarrow-type race. Yeah. And generally speaking, kids that are confined to wheelchairs would not necessarily be able to do such a thing. can imagine. But the amazing thing about Camp Pass is that there's no such thing as can't. They had, like, a wheelbarrow that could go in front of the wheelchair. You push them like that. <laughs> And it's the most unbelievable thing to see. I'd like to know who thought of that, frankly. <laughs> probably, honestly, probably Batya. I can imagine. No wonder they're so popular here in camp. <laughs> uh, let's hear it for David Lauer and Adam Steiglitz, everybody. <laughs> Continue having a great summer. Adam, treat David well. I took a poll. Adam said David's the best counselor in camp. How do you like that? Is this Hatara? 
Uh, Tara Seagull, and she does spell her name the right way, I'm told. I do, it's like Steven Seagal. That's correct. Oh, How is our relative Steven doing? Good question, I don't know. Are I'm you a lady? Uh, my husband's oh, a lady. Well, that's what I meant. Right? I'm a Bakoin, actually. Ah, how do you like that? Imagine that. Be better when Mashiach comes. The, uh, I'm told that, that um, Atara Siegel is the wife of Rabbi Ari Siegel from Los Angeles, California. He is my husband. How do you like that? All the rumors are true. They are. We actually first, we oh, first yes. met here. That would be the Shalhevet school, that right? That would be. We actually met in Hask first. The Shalhevet school. Twenty some years ago. In uh, in L.A., right? Mm-hmm. How are things out there in L.A.? Beautiful. Have weather. they heard of Camp Hask out in L.A.? They hear of Camp Hask. We have a lot of campers here. Do you have campers from L.A.? We do. No, come on. We sure do. How many? One, two, eight. I'm going to say no, ten. 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 Ten campers. Camp Hask from uh, L.A. Sure. Uh, how did Los Angeles first hear of Camp Has? How did they, who was the first to break through and send the camper out here to Parksville, New York? I'd like to know. It was the campers themselves. I don't know. Uh, probably. Unbelievable. That's pretty amazing to me. Very be- you are from Pennsylvania. Right, right. <laughs> oh, Uri's from Pennsylvania. <laughs> yes. yeah. but Uri claims to be from LA. He so that claims might be, to be from everywhere. That might be good enough. Um, all right, so Los Angeles is represented well here at Camp Hask. You're the head lifeguard here. That is true. Now, I would think, uh, you know, because of, uh, of uh, campers with different backgrounds and different abilities, mm-hmm. that head lifeguard in Camp Hask is a little bit of a different job than head lifeguard in other camps. Am I right? It is the best job not only in Camp Hask, but in the world. Imagine that. In and the world. And that means that during a typical swimming session, you're uh, obviously supervising not only a staff, but campers who are doing really a variety of different things, right? Totally different things. And a whole bunch of different totally levels. different things. There are campers who are don't listen or, or have difficulty listening to any instructions outside the pool. They come to the pool and you can teach toothbrushing and you could talk about walking in the pool for a camper who doesn't walk anywhere else and you could talk about having fun for a camper who doesn't really like to do anything else. Like now the, why is this? Does water have special powers? Water does. Mayim Chayim. That's what it is. That's water, what it is. Water has a special element That's what to it, it is. Sure. Pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. No wonder you like working in that job so much. Mm -hmm. You see things happen that you wouldn't see outside the pool, frankly. Exactly. Uh, And what about all the different levels, all the different um, uh, um, abilities that campers have? Uh, I guess each one is working to get to the next level on their on their own, right? Exactly. We have a water therapist in the pool right now today, and with some campers, she's working on stretching. A camper who can't really bend his elbow is working on bending his elbow, and then there's another camper who is working on 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 standing up straight, and then there's another camper who's just working on feeling the pressure of the water and becoming calm. Like everybody has something to do in the water that you could do better than you could do on land. Now, Tara Siegel, not to be too philosophical, but For those of us who, thank God, are able to move our elbows at a rapid pace and uh, can do most activities without, you know, even thinking twice about them, what do you learn from this experience when you see someone working an entire camp session and maybe even an entire season on just moving one's elbow or trying to stretch out properly? That everybody has some goal that you could work for and you need to have the goal in mind in order to be successful in life. And I want to add that if one does have the ability to do these things easily, they should show a great amount of appreciation for it. We Tremendous. shouldn't take things for granted. You Tremendous. probably see a lot of things that we shouldn't take for granted. Tremendous. I can only imagine. Tremendous. Wow. Do people recognize you outside the pool, by the way? Or it's like teachers in a social setting, they don't want to know you outside the pool. How does it work with the campers over here? People are constantly <laughs> coming over to ask me to open up the pool, so I think it, I think it transfers. <laughs> That's how they associate you. If they want to go swimming, they gotta, they got to beg you to open things up. Uh, how large is your staff? We have an entire girls' division. We have... Every single counts. Every single counselor is on my staff. When they come right. to the pool, every counselor works so hard. Right. So you're not just with other lifeguards. Sure. I, I would figure you'd need the cooperation of everybody around. Right. We have eight lifeguards, but then we have every single counselor comes to the pool and works so hard in the pool. Right. Uh, you don't have to name any names, but anything we should know of the uh, first two weeks in camp that have been pretty miraculous? Because I know certain campers make incredible progress, especially in the pool, in a short amount of time. Is there anything that comes to mind when I ask you that question? So I don't like to look at like the overt humongous jump but anytime we have campers who have who last year didn't come into the pool at all we have two campers this year who are in the pool constantly we have campers who um even that little elbow movement that is a huge progression for imagine. certain camps for certain campers can only imagine what would you say to the young lifeguards out there that want to pursue your type of work what would mm. you say to them come to camp ask 
um, learn everything that you can because the more that you absorb about what works in the pool, the more that you could take that out to every single part of your life. Hey, does anybody here at Camp Hess like to swim? So let's hear it for Atara Siegel. Come on. Thank you, Atara. A pleasure meeting you. Well, there you have it. Some people would probably think that swimming is not even part of the Camp Hask program. And sure enough, it's one of the most important parts uh, in terms of what goes on here on a regular basis. JM in the AM. It's Wednesday, folks. That's right. Tuesday for us because we're at Camp Hask with overcast skies. But as ZK predicted, those skies will not open until this show ends. It's as simple as that. And sure enough, we're here outdoors enjoying the incredible Camp Pass campus. Uh, and I want to thank everybody, including Stan in our studio and ZK here and Jamie here and Miriam here and everybody who's working hard to bring you this incredible program. More coming up. This is JM in the AM. <laughs> Yeah. 
The uh, Y studs, as they're known. Uh, after my goal loss, we're going to be speaking to two of our favorite people, the people who uh, lead. Even Rabbi Judah would say that they are the true leaders of Camp Pass, the uh, head counselors. We'll get to them in a moment. I do want to mention Dr. Ye- Dr. Yaish sent me regards uh, to both Stacy and myself from the amazing people at Maya Note Yeshiva High School. Let's give Maya Note an incredible round of applause. I know of at least two people who had a spectacular year this year at Mayano Yeshiva High School. And Dr. Aish tells me that uh, hundreds more than just the Seagulls had incredible years yeah. at uh, Mayano Yeshiva High School. Rabbi David Goldwasser's words, Zechanish. And by the way, Rabbi Goldwasser prepared this especially for our friends at Camp Pass. Rabbi Goldwasser's words, Zechanish Masar of Zebin of Yosef Alevi. Here is Rabbi David Goldwasser with Morning Chizuk. Good morning. We find the fascinating comment in the very beginning of this week's Parsha. We read about the travels of Bnei Yisrael. Rashi says it's like a mushal to a king who takes his son on a long journey to be healed. On their way back, the father enumerates all the stops of their journey. Kan Yoshanu, here we slept. Kan Hukarnu, here we caught cold. Kan Choshashtas Roshcha, here, your head ached. So too, Hashem recounted the various stages of Bnei Israel's journey. Today, we have the great privilege of being in Camp Hask. It's a place where miracles happen, where young people are given the special opportunity to have a summer filled with fun, excitement, educational programs, and inspiration. It's a time when we see Klal Yisrael at its very best. Young people, precious nefashos with special challenges, are encouraged to fulfill their potential. They participate in activities like thousands of their typical peers while having the time of their lives. There are so many touching moments. The dedicated staff of men and women impart new meaning to the words Ahavas Yisrael as they generously give of themselves heart and soul. Without witnessing this scene firsthand, it is impossible for you and me to understand the selfless dedication of these heroes. There is no greater schus that we as a people can accrue during these three weeks, Ben HaMetzorim, when we mourn the loss of the Beis HaMikdosh, than to share in the unparalleled Avas Yisrael that is demonstrated right here in camp. Such friendship, kindness, and unity can surely redeem us from the long gullus that our people have endured. Each of the campers in Camp Ask has his own personal journey. Each one can recount, Kan Yoshano, here we slept. Kan Hukarno, here we caught cold. Kan Choshashtas Roshcha, here your head ached. But at this point in their journey, each one can also exclaim with delight, Here we rejoice, here we are inspired, here we feel the unqualified love of the entire staff of Camp Ask, here we shine. This has been Rabbi David Goldwasser, bringing you morning chizik. Have a nice day. JM in the AM. It may be Tuesday afternoon at Camp Pass, but it's Wednesday morning at JM in the AM where we suspend everything that's been happening in this world of ours. That'll continue tomorrow. 
so that we could visit Camp Hask and uh, give you transmit over these airwaves some of the incredible magic of this place. Um, Rabbi Avi Pollock is the boys' head counselor. Dr. Rezo Yaish. Look at this. I'm saying this as softly as possible. They still get an amazing round of applause. Dr. Yaish is the girls' head counselor here at Camp Hask. And I figured the best way to start this segment is to review all the different slogans that we know collectively about Camp Hask. First of all, good morning to both of you. Thank you for being here. Good morning, Nachum. Thank you for having us here. Place where miracles happen. That was Rabbi Goldwasser. Not bad, right? Place where miracles pretty, happen. Pretty good. You agree with that one? Yeah. Right? Agreed? A lot of miracles. You've seen this over the years. Miracles happen at Camp Hask. Absolutely. Okay. The magic of Camp Hask. I saw this written on one of the posters for the big August 2nd event that we're going to talk about. So you agree that it's a magical place as well, correct? Miracles and magic. I'm with you so miracles far. Miracles and magic. I'm you agree? Both you. of those are tied for you? Like, they're both all the way up there, right? A place of miracles, a place of magic. Happiest place on earth. This is one that's really made the rounds over the years. I mean, there are a lot of people who refer to Camp Hask as the happiest place on earth. Uh, does this summer qualify as the happiest place on earth? The summer gets happier and happier as it goes along, without a doubt. This was a beautiful, beautiful week. We're in the middle of a beautiful week. I think some of the bad weather at the beginning kind of put a damper on things, but uh, the week has continued so beautifully. Uh, all the programs in camp are in full gear, and uh, it's getting happier and happier by the day. So we have miracles, magic, happiness. Anything else you want to add? There was another one that came to my mind. What was it? Yes, uh, Dr. Aish. Heaven on Earth. Heaven on Earth. There That's another go. one. <laughs> heaven on Earth. Everybody out there, you want to applaud for Heaven on Earth? You want to do that? Now, oh, we've got one more. There's another one, Rabbi oh, Pollock? You bet. What is that? <laughs> Where disabilities disappear. Where disabilities disappear? Ooh. My gosh, I'll tell you. A lot of slogans, all of them true, of course. Sunday, August 2nd, I remind everybody, starting at 10 o'clock in the morning, the magic of Camp Hask will be on display for everybody. It's the Hask Experience Day, where you can experience the happiest place on earth. Go to the website, experience.camphask.org, experience.camphask.org. We'll speak more about this event coming up. Uh, that's one way. Visiting day, as we said, the parents will have an opportunity to see everybody on Sunday and check out how their campers, how their kids, how their, how their children have been doing all summer long. And um, the two of you, you scour the globe all through the year. You spend 10 months looking for the best people to come to Camp Hass, looking for the best counselors, the best staff. And again, you've had incredible success putting together an amazing staff, haven't you? If we are heaven on earth, then our counselors are the angels the over here. The angels there we go. heaven on earth. <laughs> so we, we are taking this as far <laughs> as possible, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> now, I always ask you this question. Both of you have uh, big numbers for answers. Uh, Dr. Yaish, how many years here at Camp Hask? Oh, me and Shalamis Palak, we were just fighting about this the other night. I think... Was it a bitter fight or one of those friendly arguments? <laughs> it was getting bitter towards the end, but it was friendly start. Um, I think if, if, if I'm not approaching 18, <laughs> then, 18 uh, then, I'm, then, I'm, then I'm close. My gosh. And Rabbi Pollock, in your case, how many years are we talking yeah, about? As, as part of that fight, I actually <laughs> figured out my number. This oh, is my okay. 19th summer. 19 wow. years already. My gosh. What got you into Camp Hask? What was your entree? into this amazing place? Uh, the truth is, I wasn't planning on coming here my first summer. I had something else lined up, but HaKadosh Baruch had other plans. And uh, sitting in Morning Seder in the YU Base Medrash, uh, a friend, Jacob G Gibber, leaned over and said, hey, what are you doing for the summer? And I said, you know, it's funny. My plans just fell through this morning. And he said, I've got plans for you for this summer. And, uh, and one so thing led to another, and here I am. counselor, I assume. That, yeah, that was that was the plan to start in that position, but to right and move on. Yeah, but, hey. some other people had other ideas. Uh, Doctor Yaish, what was your entree into Camp Hask? I was uh, I was sitting in my high school, Central High School, Yeshiva University High School for girls, as a uh, sixteen-year-old, and I heard an upperclassman talking about a place where everybody who worked there was just super nice, and there was <laughs> uh, there was just a lot of friendship going on. So interesting. That was my entree. I said, I want to work in a place where everybody is just nice. At a certain point in high school, you want that all around you sure and uh and that was it and uh it's interesting because avi and i both have siblings with special needs but neither that, that you know neither one that was our entry point maybe subconsciously i don't know but it's for me that was really uh something i wanted to do i came that summer <laughs> I, I couldn't sleep the whole summer i was so excited about everything <laughs> i saw i wanted to just be part of that how but long ago were your siblings here uh, for the first time i don't think avi yours ever was my sibling my sister uh did not come to camp ask um, she's had a lot to do with uh, all sorts of special needs programs, but never made it to Camp Hask. Um, and uh, Dr. Yaish? 
and uh, my younger brother, I came first, sort of, you know, scattered things out, and then... So, uh, in both your cases, contrary to popular opinion, your siblings had nothing to do with you getting to Camp Ed. That's hilarious. You know, they didn't have anything to do directly right, with Right, but I camp. get the indirect thing, but... but yeah, that's right. That's so funny. I cannot tell you how many people right now are listening to this, and they learned something they didn't know before, I'm telling you. All right, how different is it? It must be amazing in 2015 compared... I mean, I'm sure it was great back then, but this camp is so different than it was when you first walked in, right? It's very different. The camp has grown in so many ways. It's grown physically. Uh, the professionalism of Camp Hass continues to increase year after year. The professionals brought into camp were a part of it. The facilities have grown. Our campers, there's so many campers in camp and coming from all different parts of the country, campers of all different types. Um, so the camp continues to grow in every direction almost year after year. And yeah. now with additional divisions when necessary for different situations. We've evolved our divisions. Pretty uh, amazing. You bet, without a doubt. The caliber of our staff and our division heads and our professional staff is, you know, just su super, super duper. And um, I think for me also what's evolved personally is, uh, you know, f at being here with such a long stretch of time, uh, the relationships of people to camp, it's so deep for people who come here. You know, Avi was saying before that it's it's really it's really family for them and for us at at, at this point the the, the returning campers yeah. and their families. I don't even know if we met any rookie counselors here today. I'm trying to think if any of them appeared on the air yet. Ooh. Uh, they're certainly maybe, maybe uh, they're moving around here. They're Ooh. they're around. But the 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 first timers fit into this whole family environment. Are they intimidated? By this family environment, it, it does seem like a very close-knit family that you're describing. Like every family, you know, the younger siblings uh, have the challenges sometimes uh, of uh, transitioning and getting used to things. But they do very, very quickly. It's a really intense environment, and it's a very loving place. And there's a lot of emotion in the air. And uh, like it or not, and after a couple of days of really jumping deep into the <laughs> experience here, they feel... Uh, like a part of the family. You know, yesterday, a yeah. counselor, a first-year counselor, who had a bit of a tough time transitioning at the beginning. I checked in with him yesterday. How's it going? And he said, my father called me on the phone. We talked about what I'm doing this summer. And he said, I've never been prouder of you in my life. And he turned to me and said, this is just the best experience. Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> Rabbi Avi Pollack, Dr. Rizzo, yeah, you've had counselors in Camp Hatch. The, uh, you both alluded to this already. Um, the level of professionalism, and I really can't evaluate this. I wish you would, but I, I don't know if you're comfortable talking about it. But the staff, and again, we can't at all demean or diminish the role of all the staff from 10, 20, 30 years ago. But there seems to be, I don't know if it's the staff orientation, the training. They now know what to expect compared to what staff members had 20 years ago. The reputation of what summer is like here is much more well-known mm -hmm. now than it was back then. There was a level of professionalism that you've never, it's never been like this before. And again, not putting down any prior staff, but every summer it seems to just get bigger and better in terms of the approach of the staff. It's not something that I would evaluate compared to the past. Right. As the years have gone on and as the challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day in camp have changed and evolved, we've brought in professionals to meet needs. We have dedicated speed, um, feeding specialists in the dining room. That was not like that back then. I, I'm not sure that we had the need quite right. in the same intense way. Uh, who, who are there helping at every meal, helping with the adaptive feeding. Um, Our behavior and psychology team is uh, grown tremendously and that's also a need that wasn't a, pr a presence that wasn't back years ago and on the radio you'll, you'll hear them called all day for advice suggestions a better approach how to handle something so that that approach to the camper can then be just more refined and more positive and more on target i think it's interesting a, 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 a a result of that is you were asking how the new counselors right. fit in. Right. Um, so with all that great professional support, I always laugh when after one or two days, I'll be speaking to a counselor on the road who's really one or two days will say to me, well, you know, I really feel that my camper really needs X, Y, and Z. And you know, after one or two days, they're, they're, you know, kind of debating with the, you know, the nurse about something <laughs> that they notice because there's a sense of, of, of knowledge and skill and pride and ownership and feeling like I can do this and I want to do this and I'm gonna I'm gonna advocate for my camper who right. after one day we camp. get a real kick out of out of watching counselors on visiting day share suggestions with the parents 
you know, after the, after yeah. these two weeks, I have some suggestions that you may want to take back after the summer. One might think the parents are pretty good at this yeah, by now. Yeah, huh? right. The parents, you know, laugh it off. <laughs> that is pretty funny. Uh, so that professionalism, meaning the the non counselor staff, is critical to making your counselors better. That's really what the difference is that I'm looking for. That's really what we yeah. need to emphasize if we're going to analyze this summer as compare again without comparing, comparing. But if we're going to look at it in relation to you know years and years ago, you now have a professional step at the side of the counselors that enhance their experience so much. Even I was eavesdropping on a recreation meeting last night, so our recreation team, and they were yeah, they got a big round of applause. Yeah, they're amazing. I'll tell you that much. They're awesome. Everybody loves them. And and the way they were training their rec staff wasn't just to make their programs more awesome and more incredible, which they already are, but how to help our counselors integrate their campers into the program. That's what they were doing last night in their right. training, so that then our counselors are bringing that rec program up to a different level. Right. Well, you know that this audience uh, is very into Jewish music, and we've uh, emphasized a million times over the years how music is such an important part of camp. Uh, are the concerts still the same as they were in the old days, a rocking gym and... <laughs> The whole atmosphere that you know gets people going over here. The concerts are the same and better. We've started <laughs> doing we've started doing some outdoor concerts that oh. just feel free and open and magical and uh, s oh, awesome. some magic comes to the lawn here of the motel uh, on so some afternoons. So the concerts continue to be amazing. Very nice. Amazing. All right, there you have it. Anything else you want to add? Our amazing head counselors. Anything you want to tell this audience? Um, I just continue to be amazed and Shep Nachas really watching our staff grow over the course of a summer. I literally see growth in our staff uh, who come to camp, you know, maybe a, l a bit nervous, maybe not as prepared as they wish they were, not totally sure what they're getting themselves into. Week after week, checking in with them, and by the end of the summer, or at the end of two or three summers, just to see the, the new people that have uh, been formed here. I chef such nachas, and I just love watching You know, them. it's funny, and Dr. Aish, you could add to this, uh, Avi, you say about the uh, about the counselors and staff. We so often concentrate, and I've asked you this question a million times, on the progress of campers during the summer. You're saying that you're watching an incredible growth within the Jewish community of what well, essentially is becoming Jewish leaders. You're, are, watch, you're watching right. people become amazing leaders. These are the leaders of these are the future, current and right. future uh, leaders of Klal Israel, and we we talk about having 330, 340 campers. But actually, the number is really something like twice that. When you, in when you include the staff, it's not just counselors, the waitresses, the, 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 the child care staff, the professional staff, the recreation, the growth that you see among the staff, and, and the head staff too. Right. We grow, we continue to grow. The, the growth you see and the cultivation of leadership. It's is a good training ground, huh? <laughs> it is. I, I was also thinking that this, this past summer, and last summer and this summer, I spent some time focusing on actually calling some counselor parents more than I have in the past. We're so busy calling camper parents yeah. and updating them. You know what? Our, our counselor parents also could sometimes do with a little shot of nachas here from their kids because that is a huge focus here for us. Our staff are... are, are our campers too in a certain sense and now you're take in trouble any parent who mm -hmm. hasn't heard from you yet uh -oh. <laughs> I'm just uh -oh. kidding <laughs> don't all call it once <laughs> wonderful to have you both on the air continue your amazing work on behalf of the Jewish people thank you Rabbi Avi Pollock Dr. Rezo Yaish everybody who has the best head counselors huh camp has keep it going come on keep it going everybody they need at least a two three minute ovation come on <laughs> thank you very much uh, we're going to meet people who we meet every year here at Camp Hask who have among, I think even uh, uh, Avi and Razel would agree that this group of people have one of the most challenging jobs in the entire camp. Uh, anybody who's in camp, anybody who's in camping knows in general how um, challenging the infirmary or the medical department is in any camp. It's not exactly the easiest area of the camp. Well, uh, we have here, uh, we have here, Alyssa Sachs, Esti Horowitz, and Dina Davidowitz. <laughs> Dr. Dina Davidowitz, I apologize. Where's Dr. Davidowitz? <laughs> and I thank all three of you for joining me here today at Camp Pass. Yeah, a round of applause, of course. <laughs> <laughs> They're a very enthusiastic group. Are they this enthusiastic they? when they get to your medical center? Definitely. Are they? Do they react this way? They give you a big cheer when you give them the right medicine? Is that how it works? Uh, Dr. Davidowitz, how many years have you been at Camp Hask? This is my fourth summer here. And how did you get to Camp Hask? 
So I actually had actually gotten a call from um, from Mr. Khan saying that they needed a doctor actually sort of last minute, um, many years ago now, it was uh, about six, seven years ago. Um, and I was actually in fellowship at the time and had already gone through pediatrics residency and was in fellowship and said, you know what, I could take a two week vacation and um, come up to Camp Pasco. It was an amazing experience. And some vacation it is, huh? <laughs> Not really a vacation, I guess. <laughs> it can be very busy and uh, challenging, but um, also so rewarding. And so after the first the first summer, we did those two weeks. My whole family came up, and it was a great, great experience. And we were sort of hooked, and we came two so, two more summers in a row. And then when I finished fellowship, and we um, we actually moved um, moved out of town, and it was not as easy to come back. But this year, we were able to work it out, and I'm here again for three weeks. How vast is the staff in the medical center? It's incredible. It really is. A lot we of have, people. Big numbers. Um, big numbers, and yeah. that um, there's a huge nursing staff. We have an EMT. There's always a doctor on campus. And, um, and it's very busy. So they keep us very busy here, um, but are really well resourced. Um, there are people that are, there are campers who are taking medications around the clock sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah. That would be an accurate way of putting it? Yeah, we have, we're giving medications starting from 7 o'clock in the morning till almost 10 o'clock at night. So really, really around the clock. Um, um, I could give you a little bit more details yeah, as please. to our, our nursing staff. Right now, our numbers are at 15 nurses. Um, we have five nursing assistants. We have four secretaries. We have a paramedic. We have two EMTs um, and a doctor. So we're That's 25 people. Yeah. Yeah, so we're really, really... Fully, how, many people, how many people were on the Hask medical staff the first year at camp opened? Anybody know? No idea. How I know, many? I know my first summer Maybe here. One. one? <laughs> Shamil says wow. one. There was one person here responsible <laughs> for everything <laughs> having to do with the medical department the very first year of camp. And now we're up to 25 people. Um, I know there was a year where the medical center in general underwent some major renovation, right, and expansion. Has anything significant yes, this happened year, in the last couple this of This year we added a triage, triage slash waiting room um, because... We're growing um, in numbers, not just with campers, but counselors, um, our staff in general, and our campers, um, you know, our capacity, our, complete, our campus is, is just growing every year. Totally full. So we just needed more, more space to be able to care for our campers. So we extended out and we added a triage room to the front of camp to the front of the infirmary so that we could better care for our campers. So. How often are the three of you on phone with parents? Does that happen a lot? Or? All day all long. Day. <laughs> Literally <laughs> everybody's all on the phone all day, all day long. All day long. Sometimes yeah. with the same parent four times in the same day. So, yeah, all day long. I mean, I, I, I know they're very concerned and they want to check on everything that's happening and there are different situations that arise where you have to consult with them, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, and also, I mean, communication is so important. So every time we have an update to share with the parents to be able to reassure them that we're on top of things and to get their input because they obviously know their child best um, is really, really important. How often are you on the phone with the camper's regular doctor? So that happens on occasion. It's not as often, especially because it can sometimes be hard to catch somebody while they're busy with their regular day. But, uh, you know, not being able to have a baseline exam on somebody who may not be verbal is really a little bit of a challenge. And so a lot of times if there's something that I'm not quite sure about or something in the record I'm not quite sure about, um, calling their doctor can be an amazing resource, and I do. Yeah, I their counselors know a lot about the case, about the situation, Absolutely. but not always everything, right? Absolutely. My gosh, unbelievable. Alyssa Sachs, S.D. Horowitz, and Dr. Dina Davidowitz are here. We're talking about the Medical Center at Camp Hask, which is a, an organization in and of itself, as you've been hearing. 25 people leading this medical staff. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. Um, are, are there situations that come up that are, how do I put this? I want to say scary, or I mean, I know that there are episodes that happen that can be scary, but situations in general where you're told before the summer this camper is in this type of situation medically, and you've never really had that before, and you're not quite sure how the staffs will be able to adjust to it. Does that happen? So, our campers, you know, a lot of our campers have all different type of diagnoses, um, a lot of a lot of which um, are very uncommon, some some which you know are very very rare. Uh, genetically rare, um, but not of which um, might be uncommon here. Um, They're not unheard of. No, 
not unheard of and not necessarily uncommon here. You know, so we'll, have, we'll have some parents that will call us and say, you know, you may have never heard of this before and, and we'll, 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 you know, come back and tell them, oh, we have 20 other campers here with the same thing and they'll right. be shocked that, and, and it'll give them a lot more confidence that we'll be able to take care of their kid and, um, you know, we're, we're much more, we have, t we have tools and resources and also, um, it gives us it just gives us a lot more confidence to be able to take care of their their children because we're we've seen it before we, you know just just dealing with other their children with the same yeah, yeah. Um, also um, you know we we're dealing with a lot of children you know a lot of different kids with seizure disorders a lot of different children with um, um, feeding issues um, pulmonary issues right. many campers yeah. So, um, and, and and thank God, um, we have we ha our our medical staff and 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 our resources throughout camp um, are built so that we have um, staff that can that can help our ca counselors, um, you know, um, support them um, so that they they don't feel alone, and um, you know, if if they have any questions at all. We're there to help them, no matter what time time yeah, of day. I could see counselors sometimes. I don't want to say panicking, but you, but really, you know, feeling lost when these types of medical situations arise. Obviously, your support is essential to them. What are you holding in your hand over there? Oh yeah. So this is basically this is this is our what we call our emergency response system. But what we try to tell our, our counselors that we, we don't call it our emergency response system anymore. We just call it our hotline, <laughs> okay? Um, this is um, our hotline. They dial 7777 from any phone in the entire camp. Um, we also gave them a 917 number that they put into their, into their cell up. phones. Right. Um, they can call us any time of day, any, any hour, um, and they will reach either myself or Esty, and um, we will be there within seconds. Um, with whatever question they have, any medical question, sleep issue, whatever it might be, day or night. Yeah, um, we didn't even talk about the night. No. <laughs> that whole day aspect or of night. It. <laughs> I can't imagine yeah. that's too easy. Now, um, you, you know, when we speak to the counselors and, and those who are uh, you know dealing with the kids in fun environment like recreation and sports and swimming and all that, so we get the you know the satisfaction they get out of it. Is it is it a satisfying experience it's to definitely. do what you are doing? It definitely is, especially since we started way back in the beginning of the How year. How many years are you here? Um, I was born here. <laughs> Gosh. It's a long time ago? Um, <laughs> this is my fourth summer working in right. the medical um, department, but I um, assisted for two or three summers while I was in nursing school. Wow. And my grand mother my grandparents are mr and mrs khan who right. started ask so now we got the whole picture. i've been here my whole life now we got the whole picture for sure i bet you so. even before those uh years you were training you were taking I a look at what was going on around camp and getting trained yeah. <laughs> yeah. so it's a rewarding so. experience even if it's not as i don't know as fun as sports worthy and as glamorous as maybe some of the other jobs well we've been working on it and talking to parents since february uh, oh yeah God. so <laughs> like now that we see it and we see the camper and we see how they're getting the cure that you know, the parents told us to tell the counselors to do this and this for their child, and right. now we see that it's being carried out, and how good the campers are looking, and how they're um, responding, and how they're, how well they're doing in camp. It is just I, is that true? By the way, see. you could have had conversations before Pesach with parents about all this. Definitely, yeah. We, we get um, the medical forums come to us um, February and March. Um, and we're s we call every single parent and we review that medical form. We put all that information into the computer um, and we prepare um, what's called a Medi Alert for every counselor, um, for every therapist, for every teacher to review. It so sums up the whole situation? It pretty much gives them like a cheat sheet. Right, a thumbnail um, of the whole thing. Yeah, so that they have all the information on their, on their camper so that they, you know, they can refer to it throughout the summer. Gives them all their information. All right. Alyssa Sachs, Esty Horowitz, Dr. Dina Davidowitz, thank you. Continue your amazing work. Incredible. They lead the medical center here at Camp Hask. And every single year we learn why it's such an important component at Camp Hask. Unbelievable. More coming up. Keep it here. Oh, what are we doing? A song? America's one and only Jewish Moments in the morning radio program heard on listeners sponsored WFMU East Orange, WMFU Mount Hope, Rockland County at 91.9 in the FM dial. 
Around the world on the web at jmandtheam.org. WFMU East Orange, WMFU Mount Hope. It is Godlu done by 613. Another hour to go here at JMM from Camp Hask on a Wednesday. Woo! Reba Ostrich and Zahava Cohen are here in our makeshift studio <laughs> underneath the beautiful gazebo that the MIH crew has set up for us. Thank you, MIH. Um, and they are responsible for academics, I'm told, here at Camp Hask. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are things going? 
Amazing. You've given us amazing, both of you have given us amazing uh, accounts over the last couple of years when we've had you on the air about uh, campers and their progress and things that are happening in your department. Uh, tell us about the summer of 2015. It's pretty amazing if you walk around to our 19 classrooms to believe that they've only been in session for seven days. You walk through each one of the rooms and you think they're going for months on end. The enthusiasm of the teachers, enthusiasm of the students, everybody's really giving it their all. And I have many teachers that work upstate and live upstate during the year that can't wait to come back and be part of the exciting world of Hask. They you consider yeah, it their you've family. Yeah, you told us this in the past. People who live locally and they just they love the Hask experience and they they watch incredible progress all through the summer. Even now, I just came from a classroom where a teacher just told me a student who people would have just given up on. She just kept going and going. She's had it for a few years, and after several years, she's made progress in an area that she's worked on summer after summer. Pretty amazing. We just have faith in the abilities that our campers and our students have. Zahava Cohen, how's the summer been so far? Wonderful also. I feel like we've been here for about six <laughs> months. Avi <laughs> Pollock said at the meeting it's uh, been three months since we've been in camp. Um, our staff, uh, we have 27 therapists, occupational, physical, and speech therapists here in camp, and it's not enough as your eyes are getting wider it's and wider. Not <laughs> Um, we have amongst that staff also, we have Faye Waxen, who's a feeding specialist. Her responsibilities are in the dining room, also in the camp, looking at how everyone's feeding, if they're safe, how they're eating, what they're eating, texture wise, safety wise, Beyond everything just like a that. Beyond nutritionist. Beyond, yeah, yeah, in addition to nutritionist. Um, and we have this year actually an aqua therapist, a physical therapist who's only in the pool. Um, you know, in terms of there, we have Rooney Finkelstein, who's been a speech therapist many years here, and her specific area is technology. So making sure everyone who has a device has it working, up and running, so campers can really communicate. We have a lot of campers who are not verbal, but are so communicative, and they really can communicate with their camper, with their counselors, with the staff, with, and it's amazing. I tell this to the counselor orientation that just if someone's not verbal, they're still trying to communicate, and there, whether it's iPads or eye gaze devices or all these incredible devices where they, they can speak and their worlds are opened up and here they really have the opportunity to speak with other people and share thoughts and communicate. The two of you are probably not baffled by all this technology anymore, right? As, as all this comes out every <laughs> single summer, I'm sure you have more technology, different equipment, advances that have been made. Some of the things you just mentioned are just incredible. I, I mean, it is amazing. I'm, I'm baffled by it because <laughs> I'm not a communication person, a technology person, as my staff knows, but it is really amazing. I mean, we have a, a camper here, she's actually from California. She uses an, a specifically an eye gaze device, and it's just that. you. She, it and tracks her up. eye gaze and she is as her father said when they dropped her off um, a few days ago a few weeks ago um, she's almost proficient in it so she really can communicate with you like we're speaking she uses an eye gaze and the the computer speaks but based on what she's looking at and what she uh Unbelievable. You know, it's really quite amazing. Unbelievable. The it's working. part of the philosophy and with it making everybody the best and bringing out the best in each one of them and m helping them to communicate is so important. It's just amazing. Your staff's incredible. Uh, congratulations to both of you on <laughs> another incredible summer. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of campers are going to be learning a lot of great things between now and the end of the camp. That we know. And the parents, I'm sure, are very appreciative. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that says Ahava Cohen, Reba Ostrich. We've spoken with them before. Every summer, they supervise some incredible miracles that go on here at Camp Hask. Reb Judah's here. He is the um, executive director of uh, Camp Hask. Reb Judah Michelle. He is uh, sitting to the left of uh, Rabbi Benji Epstein. Dr. Benji Epstein. Dr. Benji. Both. Is he a rabbi doctor? Rabbi yeah, rabbi, like doctor. rabbi doctor. Rabbi doctor. Rabbi Dr. Benji Epstein is director of staff development. If there is somebody at Camp Hask who could tell us just how hard this staff is working, it would be your by Dr. Ben G. Epstein. Welcome back to the show. Thank you so much. And in regard, to regards you. to my mother? I greatly appreciate it. Your <laughs> mom is one of the greatest people she's on good. earth, but you probably know that. Yes. I mean, she's uh, my mother, so. Bobby, <laughs> Bobby, Bobby Epstein. Bobby Epstein. You met her. You met oh, her. Oh. Uh, oh. Incredible. Uh, so here we are. We are uh, meeting some amazing people and having a fantastic time here at Camp Hask. The spirit is fantastic. The yeah. Uh, there's an atmosphere here that is indescribable. The best radio announcers on earth could not describe the atmosphere here at Camp Pass. Rabjuda is uh, <laughs> Rabjuda is finding something very funny. I see. 
I bring, I bring, we bring, we bring a lot of simcha everywhere is, we is go. Is that what's going on? I mentioned the great atmosphere here, and all of a sudden you burst. No, into we like laughing. to have fun here. We is like to have fun is? here, and and uh, it's um, it's a big privilege. I mean, Rav Judah, as you remember, is the chief rabbi of the world. Right. <laughs> Declared by, I'm trying to think who said it. It's it's just unanimous. Wasn't it was it one of the campers who proclaimed him chief? Rabbi? I think um, campers. We all have staff, special needs, nothing. And we all have special <laughs> needs. That's that's our mantra. <laughs> but um, <laughs> we're an incubator um, for what is the exact phrase? We're an incubator for leadership and for initiative, for kvod shemaim, creativity, yeah. creativity. I mean, the, the the people who are working here in every single department and every single part of our program. Across the board, you're talking about not just the brain trust of the Jewish community, the heart trust of the Jewish community, dedication, selflessness, vision, commitment, taking achrais, taking responsibility for other people, seeing the good in themselves and others, looking at the strengths of one another. We're building a conscious community of givers here. The best of the best. And, and, and it doesn't stop here. The summer incubates it, and then we send it out into the world. I don't remember if uh, if staff development was your focus in previous summers or not. It's it's sort of morphed into that. Um, it's my official title, which I gave to myself. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> Is the director was that a long meeting? Or it <laughs> was an amazing meeting. I should have thought of a better acronym because it doesn't work out to anything. Like I think, I think it was in the dog. I think we were. It was, having, it was we over were hot dogs and beers in Miami. <laughs> after, That's yeah. what happened. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah. I was like, I think I need a new title. <laughs> so it was director of staff development and clinical research, um, and even we're already starting now. Um, just to, in terms of like return on investment on your, you know, you're sending your daughter or son here to be a, a counselor at Camp Hask, and six, seven weeks later, you have someone who's more empathetic. You have someone whose um, intrinsic values are are. Um, increased, uh, not increased. So I mean, in terms of your intrinsic uh, ways of perceiving the world, meaning we're changing. Yeah, you're changing. It's. A, I mean, again, they pick all that up. I mean, with your training and help, obviously. It, it ha I mean, uh, uh, Dr. Yaish, and we and we have such a great psychological staff here with Dr. Yaish and and Dr. Shalamis and the three. I mean, the three of us, and um, it's we're, we're you change, and and people have a hard time changing. You know, in terms of therapy, right. thinking about that, it, change is very difficult. And you walk out of the summer, and you're a better person. Is there a more willing? Is there more of a willingness to learn in this environment when one is a staff member? In other words, they walk in, they they see how gargantuan the task is, and and are more willing to listen and to be trained and to and to adhere to instructions. And you go to a different camp, and people may walk in and say, you know, I I know how this works. I've been a, I've been a youth leader. I've been a group leader. I know how this works. The analogy is throwing someone to the deep end of the pool, and they don't know how to swim. And then you throw in some sharks, right. and you say, "Figure it out." But we're here. We're here to support. People are open. People walk in and they say, "Hey, Fani Baolam." Like they just walk in and say, "Where am I right now?" And <laughs> when they they realize that this is something that they can't even begin to fathom, and they're they, yeah, they're 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 open to it. They're open to because they see that the staff wants to help, and the staff, the upper staff right. who are supporting, and the counselors are here to grow. And and there's a sh just been a shift that we're all here, we're all in this together, we're all in the same boat, Oto Sira, as we'd say, and there's just a real attitude and um, just a real perspective, con perspective right. of growth. It's growth. It's 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 you're either giving and getting, and it's constant. Sometimes the camper's giving, and sometimes the counselor's giving. Remember, Dr. Benji Epstein or Judah Michelle, I, I, I hate to interrupt this conversation, but I now need your observation. Uh, moments ago, pouring rain. 60 seconds later, bright skies. Rabbi Michelle, what's your impression of all this, of our visit, coincidentally, at a time when the weather changes so quickly? Well, it's clear that the Bona Shalom wanted that, uh, wants today, today to be a beautiful day for us. <laughs> Simple as that. I've <laughs> spoken to at least... The, the faucet went on and then automatically went off? I've spoken to at least 15 counselors, and they yeah. say that there's some calming effect that happens when Nachum comes to camp. Yeah, it just sure. seems like right. every The calming effects in my office back home, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> when I come to camp, no, but if you see when it rains, you see it it, it, it it makes things a little bit more difficult. We have everything is paved, you know, all the walkways and everything is accessible and open to everyone. But it just it, it just requires more effort on behalf of the counselors and the staff members. But challenges bring out the best in people. Yeah, and trust me, they're ready for it. It's an amazing thing. They're up for the challenge. Yeah, and it's, an, it's an amazing me. thing. And when you're in an environment which is growth oriented, and you're in an environment which is an inspired environment. Uh, we're, we're, and we're doing everything we possibly can to facilitate that and to cultivate that 
Um, it's, it's an amazing thing. Can I make an observation? Yeah. Should I assume that a camper has just decided that that would be a good place for him to be at this point, and now the staff's going to have to deal with that situation? Right? Yeah. Essentially. That's essentially. Okay. Well, also they're, See, they're, they're, they're also the finished world. with academics now, so there's a right. little bit more. So a camper at moment's notice might may become very stubborn in terms of uh, you know where they want to go or what they want to do, and that, uh, that's one of the millions of things. Well, it's also philosophically that the here. Has to deal philosophically with. here. Meaning anywhere else in the world, he'd have to be. Adapting to or playing by rules right. that were not designed right. specifically for his behave needs. A certain way, yeah, right. but here, this environment is a level playing field, and it's specifically tailored toward the individual needs of every single camper. I mean, people say that we have 350 campers, 340. We have one camper 350 times, and each individual <laughs> has an environment which is, you know, specifically tailored for their needs and their strengths. So uh, yes. Dr. Epstein's working with one uh, staff uh, member they, multiple yes. times. Hundreds and hundreds right. and hundreds and hundreds of times. And, it's, right. a, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a real schuss. And I told Jordan Odinsky that, uh, you know, you have to be 100% with being 100% not okay. Right. It's, and that's uh, part of it. Yeah, these are activities. Uh, this is, oh, because, right, one of the things we point out each time we're here is that in addition to all the activities, and you saw what type of round of applause your activities people got. Amazing. My gosh. Amazing. Like the, the heroes of camp. But in addition... Everybody here under the leadership of Rabbi Michelle wants to make sure that the staff is taken care of, that they have activities, uh, really potent, good, high-quality activities to keep them uh, engaged the entire summer. Yeah, it, the, first of all, the, the team that's here, the team that's here that works together beautifully, are all support each other, from our camp director, from Shmiel, all the way down and all the way across the board. We're all working together. We have unbelievable staff programming. Uh, Tsipora Schwartz. Is coordinating our staff programming this year, and uh, Rifka Abbey. Hey, Rifka Abbey, Rifka all right. Abbey, hey, rookie of the year, yeah, rookie of the year. Rifka Shout Abbey. out to Rifka Abbey. Is that, is Abbey, that she went, you know, she she's been, she went through the minor <laughs> leagues and uh, and now came up here to to to, to contribute. <laughs> yeah, she's our special events coordinator. Yeah, the highest level. Of I major mean, you can see this is, this the is, amount of the major leagues, the, the amount of the activities best. that the staff has to choose from uh, every night in our base matters program. Shurim, the greatest guest speakers and tower personalities. Uh, are coming from far and wide to be a part of what's happening here, to be inspired and to share their Torahs. Oh, rumor has it Rabbi Teller was just here. Uh, Rabbi Teller was just here. He was in my studio last sure, week. Sure, Ravina will be here for Shabbos. Is that true? Yeah, oh. sure. Ravina's coming specifically from Eretz Israel for only a couple of days to spend his time here in Camp Why Ask. has he become such a great advocate of Camp Ask? Ravina has been a great advocate of Camp Ask for years. In fact, he wears his sweatshirt. He puts on his Hask sweatshirt during the Ela. Because he said, this is the you're time where I have serious. to generate Zechios. No, I'm, I'm At the end serious. of Yom Kippur, you're serious. I'm totally serious. They're, At the end of Yom Kippur, he puts on his hat. Chai Rosner is corroborating that story. Chai. You've seen this. Chai, Chai's seen everything. Yeah, I mean... Uh, 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 wow. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Yeah. That is pretty cool. Thank God. All right, so he'll be visiting as well. Um, uh, Bela Mandelbaum is joining this conversation. Yeah. Tell me Bela's title here, please. Bela is our creative director. Hey there, Bela, creative and, director. And also involved in helping us make ha Camp Ask be a 365-day-a-year program. Meaning? What does that mean, Bela, 365? Well, this year we have a new development program. We're going to have events throughout the year, unlike we've ever had before. Nice. Um, we have a young leadership team who is going to be running specific events for alumni, and we just want to put Hask out there on the map, get as many people involved as possible. Um, we're going to have Shabbatonim for, for, so that families could have respite during the year. Um, Shabbos, hopefully, in Camp Hask. And um, we're having, coming up this month on July 27th, a bowling event in Bullmore, Chelsea yeah. Piers. That's right. Oh, in the city? In the That's city. right, dude. Yep. Um, so we want everyone to come out there, enjoy a really fun night. It's going to be catered. Um, <laughs> um, Avi Stoller is another person who is running the event planning for yep. the, during the year. Sam Schertz, who you met at the concert. Yeah, so as many people as there are in Hask, you have God knows how many more who are former staff members who are in the city during the summer. It's family. Yeah, and it's, they're all family who want to come back and reunite. A, well, when oh someone goodness. leaves here, we have a cadre of, of, of leaders. I mean, every single person who emerges from here just wants to be connected, wants to identify with and be a part of what's happening here. I mean, you can't go anywhere in any organization, whether it's a school, a shul, in the lay leadership of our community and not find a Hask alum, someone who cut their, who, someone, someone who literally... Sold their salt here who, who came through this program. And, and now, in recent years, we're, we're investing time and resources and consciously cultivating that. 
so that it can be replicated all over Klal Yisrael and the entire world. Hey, listen to this. Bela, August 2nd. You know what's happening August 2nd? No the Hask way. Experience. I'm holding this up for our cameras. Could you imagine the Hask Experience 2015 takes place on August 2nd right here? Right here at It's going to be right here starting at 10 o'clock in the morning. Yep. There'll be a live concert, and according to Reb Judah, listen to this. I don't even know if Bela knows this. But I happen to find that. Special announcement today. We Special saved it for your show. We saved it for your show. Listen to this, everybody. On August 2nd, you know who's coming to Camp Hass? Who? Who? Avraham Freed. Avramo yeah. <laughs> himself will be here in concert. There'll be an exciting carnival. There'll be bunk presentations. There'll be a catered lunch. There will be a... Um, Family softball game. There'll be pony rides. All of this as part of the Camp Hask experience. Uh, a day at Camp Hask for alumni, friends, and family. Information about all of this. Am I right, oh Bela? All you got to do I'm is go free. to experience.camphask.org. Yes, all the information is there. Ex experience. <laughs> experience. <laughs> Uri Butler's firing people <laughs> behind us. <laughs> Look at I this. think I think I we think we should I think we should have Uri oh, announce the concert. Yeah. Uri is going to be emceeing the event. Uri, you want to tell the audience who's going to be coming here August second, please? What? I'll run free. There you go. Shmuel, you agree with that? He does that so much better Shmiel. than I do. Yeah. One more thing, Shmiel, can we get has tickets for has twenty nine, please? <laughs> <laughs> please do that. <laughs> what? Make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> A big thank you to Silky and Dink Productions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Oh, uh, boy. Shmiel's never been on the spot like that, I'll tell you that much. Shmiel has never been put on the spot like that. Uri needs his tickets well, now. <laughs> we gotta start, we gotta, gotta start getting ready to the Fedahaz concert. Tell him you'll email them to him, uh, Shmiel. Maybe he'll give you a you break. Bet. We'll hand deliver them to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, whether you're going to the January concert or not, on August 2nd, if you're here, You'll see Avram Freed live in concert on this beautiful campus. It's an unbelievable and day. And I assume if it's gorgeous here that day, you'll have an outdoor concert. I mean, right? imagine this all this glare we have. There, there are amusement rides, carnival rides, pony rides, an unbelievably uh, beautiful day of family, friends, alumni. Uh, we've been working on this for, uh, for the last couple of years. It's getting bigger and bigger every single year. It's just an incredible day of Kvot Shemaim. Yeah, last year's experience day was fantastic. I it was remember. awesome. There's nothing like it. Uh, everybody out there, plan your calendar accordingly. Ba uh, Bela, anything else you want to add? What should people know? What if people want information about uh, joining the alumni and being part of this whole development team? What should they do? Um, so we have, um, you can either email Bela at campass.org. Um, or go to our website. There's information there. Um, we would love as many people involved as possible. Um, people who are coming to the Hask Experience can sign up to be on the Young Leadership Committee, and we just want as many people involved as possible. And again, experience.camphask.org. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, Shmiel, while you're here, I want to make mention of the fact that uh, when JM and the AM begins and Modani plays, Shmiel is usually at about exit what? What exit are you at usually when Modani hits the airwaves? <laughs> I'm usually on Route 17 somewhere. <laughs> yeah, somewhere on Route 17. <laughs> Shmiel's the only one who could tell you what this place looks like all through the year. Uh, not easy to maintain this campus all through the year, Shmiel Khan, am I right? It's a gewaldig as a chus to do what I'm doing. Um, I want to bring to, you, to your attention and to your audience's attention something I'm not sure if it was mentioned, and you can correct me, please. It's, it's camp Hask is a great camp. We, we develop a lot of leaders, leaders of Kalal Yisrael, a lot of people, all the, all the staff here grow in different ways. But also, we, I wanted to mention, what do the staff do for the parents of these children? Mm. What the staff do for the parents of these children is something incredible. Um, I just want to tell you this little story of a parent that was so excited that he grabbed me by my shirt. <laughs> he said, I'm so excited, I have to tell you this. Tells me... Imagine in your house when you come home Friday night from shul, he says, your table is set, your wife's candle, silver candlesticks are on the table, it's, it's nice silverware, may even be silver, nice china on the table, napkins and everything. Well, since my daughter was started to get out of the playpen, in my house, we have nothing on the table, ever. 
when my wife hands me my plate, a plate of gefilte fish, it's not on a plate of china, it's on a paper plate. Why? Because my daughter will pull it off. And when she pulls it off, she, everything breaks, shatters. So when I come home from school, I have come home to a bare table. My wife's, my wife's candlesticks are high up where my daughter can't reach it. And can you imagine this coming Friday night, I'm going to come home from school and my table will be set just like in your house. Wow. Can you imagine that? I've repeated it since I heard it. I repeat it a hundred times and it brings tears to my eyes. Can you imagine what all you counselors and every staff person in this place, what is the chus you have just for this one family? Amazing. I want to say one more thing. Sure. <laughs> this past orientation, you know we have orientation staff comes up here from right. Thursday morning till Sunday afternoon. We said hi to you as you were on your way to right. orientation. Right? <laughs> right. I remember that. You bet. <laughs> At the end of orientation, there is four. We have veteran staff get gets up and we have a, one of the end, the end session is forty five suggestions in forty five minutes. And different count the council the veteran councils get up and say, if you do so and so, it'll be easier if you do so and so. This will get easier for you. One one counselor, one of the young men, got up and said, Imagine, you know, we I'm, my campers are adults. And they're not totally trained. They can't do it all on their own, and we have to clean them. Imagine I take my camper into the bunk, and the odor is not perfect, and I have to change it. What do I do? It is so difficult. What do I do? He says, if you're going to turn around and say, and say it, by, and, say it and you really mean it, you turn around and it becomes half the job. Whoa. Imagine that. Oh boy, that is so deep. That it is so deep, is. and gives everybody listening in a, a very important perspective on things. And that's what goes on here in Camp Pask. Nothing, no, nothing short of that. Right. And both Rib Judah and uh, Dr. Epstein were telling us about how difficult some of the counselors do have it here. Right, there are some very difficult tasks behaviorally to be challenged. Ca- uh, the simple care is so difficult. Right. You know, we have a, a six thirty minion, six thirty uh, shachos minion every morning. Who wants to get up so early, six thirty? When davening for the camp is only eight o'clock, you got to sleep at least another half hour, forty five minutes. We have sixty boy counselors, minimum of sixty boy counselors coming to the six thirty minion on Monday and Thursday at six twenty. We're supposed to be six six fifteen. Why they want to be able to daven? They go back, to, ah. they, they run back to the bunks, get the kids ready to be on time for davening. So they're davening twice, the first can time, imagine, so they can, can daven, ima- actually. Can you imagine that? Even on Sunday, even on Sunday, the, the, the 6.30 minutes, the 6.30 minutes, six days, seven days a week, on Shabbos also. Shabbos, Shaykh, and the 6.30. A mob, of, a mob, of, a mob of people in the. In the in that you Shemaim. may have ju- Shmuel may have just described one of the reasons for the success of Kev Hask. Coach Shemaim, there's a lot of siyata deshmai here. There's unbelievable, unbelievable. Amazing. There's something. There's something very special we're doing for the staff to show our car satov. We haven't uh, we haven't announced it yet. I mean, everybody sees this uh, the schedules right. that are hanging with all the incredible activities, but um, Sam Schertz actually had the idea. One of the uh, one of the founders of our young leadership. Um, it's going to be after Tisha B'av. A uh, very special evening of Hakar Satov uh, with A.B. Rottenberg and Baruch Levine. Rabbi Baruch Levine are going to come for a special staff night. Kumzitz, the Vetora, stories, right and songs, right here in camp. Right here in camp for the grand piano, right here in the shul and camp for the staff. We're, we're, we're trying our best to show our Hakar Satov. There's no way we could express how thankful we are, how appreciative we are for all the unbelievable efforts of our staff. Hey, staff, you're hearing this for the first time, right? We love you. We love you guys. Very nice. I thank all of you. Uh, I want to say, so, the last time we had such a uh, kumzitz, like I'm expecting uh, with right. A.B. Rottenberg, was in 1994, <laughs> when Rav Schleimer uh-huh. was here. Oh. Uh-huh. He's, he was, in, he was uh-huh. in the gym for a, until about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh-huh. And the entire staff was there. It was awesome. Uh, Any you, videos I, of that night, Shmuel? <laughs> there may be. I don't know. I, have to I, would the not, I would not mind seeing some footage of that Parksville evening. Parksville sessions with Shiri Halavim were pretty strong. <laughs> I'll tell you, the Parksville sessions with Shiri Halavim were pretty strong. 
version <laughs> volume three. Coming volume out. three coming out. Gotta plug yeah. my music. Are you kidding? We're ready to gotta, play gotta it. Plug. It's, it's three weeks. I, I just I got Mahara, here. Mahara, you bought a bass. Get this. it to us the day after the show. Where's, where's my Kickstarter campaign? We're starting right now. Spin <laughs> you know the, spin the house, Buck. <laughs> Indiegogo, <laughs> Sherry Halavim. We have to shout out our staff in Brooklyn. We have a staff in Brooklyn oh, yeah. that are working year-round. Mrs. Chaya Miller. Oh, She's in the office amazing. right now amazing. across from us. She's working day and night across, around the clock, around the year, for the families uh, of our campers to make she's this such, happen. She's such a family advocate to make sure every every. How every many years does she ask? 37. About 37 years. <gasps> what? Wow. Yeah. She came here when she when I she uh, during her, she came here during her shave brush for an what? interview. I remember this story. I remember that story. ZC Rosenfeld is in the office. Oh, ZC of Leia and Suri in the office working around the year to make this happen. We're really appreciative. One more shout out. Yeah, Co- kosher soul food. Yeah, what's kosher? Our soul in food? the kitchen, Gelb Strong. The seven <laughs> <laughs> guys in the kitchen. No, you listen, an army is only as strong as its stomach. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are full of love. What's been the me- what's been the meal of the summer so far? Tell me, tell me. <laughs> Every meal or they make plenty of great dishes. Every meal. Mrs. Khan <laughs> has them going. Mrs. Gelb has them going. Thank God. That's great. All right, everybody, we all thank you. Amazing. Thank you all. Thank uh, you Dr. Pollock's going to join us, I'm told. Uh, where is Dr. Shalamis Pollock? Is she joining us here? Yep. Yeah, she is. Thank you, everybody, Dr. Epstein. You're an amazing man. Judy, you're getting a lot of shout outs from the crowd. That's because they want they because they want to get on the air. They think you're the key. <laughs> you, they think you're the ticket to getting on the radio. <laughs> Dr. Shalamis Pollock is here. She's the camp psychologist for Camp Hask. Already it sounds like a challenging position, am I right? It is. It's challenging, but it's a lot of fun. Um what goes on? What are your responsibilities? In what way do you help campers and staff here? So our job is to help camp run smoothly to help people enjoy themselves, to help people with the skills that they need to do their job efficiently and effectively and with a smile on their face. How many years are you in Hask? Oh, that's a question my husband and I always argue about. <laughs> I feel like it's 100, um, but then maybe I'm aging. But it is close to 20, right? Um, yeah, I started in camp 23 years ago. 23? 23 years ago, although I haven't been here straight. Uh, I think it's about my 15th year, if I'm counting. You had an array of jobs here over the years? I have. I started out as a waitress and a junior counselor, a counselor, a recreation person. I ran the game room. Yeah, I asked oh. this because I, I would assume I would assume that all those experiences are very helpful in your current position. They if, are. If you're a psychologist here and you can relate to both ends, campers and counselors from all these departments, it must be very helpful. It is. I think it gives me some credibility with the counselors when I look at them and say, I know what you're going through. It's tough. We're going to get through it. And who knows, 23 years later, you may be here still smiling in Camp Pass. I'll tell you, it's amazing. How different are things now in your department than they were years ago? I mean, I guess everything is so specialized and, and uh, you know, training is so different. How would you describe the way things are today? Well, 23 years ago, there was no psychology department. Right. Um, Didn't exist. No, not at all. I think camp was small, and counselors just did what they thought they can do. And I'm sure they did it well and successfully, but I don't know how many campers we had then. Maybe 100, and now we're 350 campers and maybe 600 staff members. Camp is big, um, and we've grown in our professionalism and our training. I think orientation, when I was a counselor, maybe was a day. I know it's a five-day training before the campers come up. Um, We have a lot of in-services throughout the summer. It's a lot of support, a lot of help in helping the counselors to do a really good job. Give me a typical episode that's already happened this summer that you have to deal with. No names, obviously, but uh, give me something that happened that would give us a good example of the type of questions that come come across your way. Okay, so let's say we have campers in camp who communicate in ways that are not typical. So maybe they won't be able to speak or they can't use their body language in a way that's easy for somebody else to understand. So imagine playing a very difficult charades game with somebody <laughs> to try and figure out you have a, a kid who's sad or never scared. Ends, huh? Correct, there you go. And um, without the acting or the speaking, sometimes it's hard to understand a camper. Um, so we work with staff and trying to understand through eye language, through um, all sorts of very minor things that somebody else might not pick up on but when you come to love and take care of somebody you pick up on all those small details um you know so if we have a child who doesn't want to go into the dining room but who can't tell us why uh we do a lot of detective work but experienced detective work to figure out is it the noise that's overwhelming is it they need their ketchup on the table before they get there is it that they like to go around through the back door and not the front door because the air conditioner is blowing in a certain direction that's not comfortable for them um so we do a lot of support in helping counselors get to know and really understand their do campers. you draw conclusions 
questions each time? We do. Doesn't mean they're correct. Um, but right. I feel like, you know, even as parents of typical children or neurotypical children, you try something. It doesn't mean you always get it right. But sometimes it helps um, even when you haven't gotten that exact ice cream bar that the kid was wanting. But if you get them that little 99 cent store toy, they're happy. Uh, <laughs> so, true. you know, we do our best and God willing, it works. Dr. Shalamis Pollock is here. Uh, camp psychologist here at uh, at Camp Hask. How large is the staff now? Is there a whole staff, or is it just you? Or no, not just me. We have a fabulous team. So there's me. I'm a clinical psychologist. I have a PhD in clinical psychology, and I run our team. Uh, we have Elisheva Hyman, who um, is our behavior specialist in camp. Uh, she works primarily with our campers with autism. Um, we have Natan Santa Cruz, who also started out here as a counselor way back when, has been with us, I don't know how many years, but many. Um, and he is an assistant in our team. And we have a fabulous intern this summer, Rachel Goldstein, uh, who was a, I think, a day camp counselor, a waitress, a counselor for many years. Uh, so she's now joined our team as well. And we have Dr. Benji Epstein, who I think you yeah, spoke with spoke before me, sure. um, who does a lot of work with our staff and keeping them happy and their overall mental health uh, while they're working really, really hard in camp. Plenty of staff members have gone on to nursing, therapy, occupational therapy, physical, every behavioral therapy, psychology, I'm sure. Many of them discover how incredible your field is from this experience with their campers at Camp Ask. I think many of them want to have a walkie-talkie here one day. (laughs) (laughs) But not every social work job comes along with a walkie-talkie. No, but seriously, camp is a place where I think allows people to discover a talent and a joy um, in working hard with people, a very rewarding experience that they might not have thought otherwise. I think people come to camp thinking they're going to work hard. Um, And yes, they work hard, but they find such a joy in giving that they feel like, you know what, let me make a life life career out of it and i encourage anybody who's listening who's worked in camp for many years even if you haven't worked here recently if you're interested in a social work a psychology a behavior position come back we'd love to have some really good staff on our team yeah it's an important point you're welcome back if you have that degree now come on back and put it to good use for a wonderful cause uh dr shalamis pollock thank you continue to have a great thank you it's good to be on the show dr shalamis pollock psychologist here uh, the camp psychologist here at uh, Camp Ask. Uh, we are moving on to Dina Morris, who's here. She's a therapist in the sensory room here at Hask. And Yakir, is it Wokstock? I pronounced it properly. 20 years in Camp Hask as a therapist. What was day one like for you 20 years ago? Well, so it's a little bit of a misnomer. 20 years total in Camp ah. Hask. Five of them as a counselor, How many? 15 as a therapist. So what was day one like that first day as a counselor? Day one, seeing my camper over here. You're serious? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, the one and only, I'm sure I can say his name on this, Uri Butler. Oh, my gosh. Uri was your camper? Uri was my camper. What year was that? Uh, that was in 95. Wow. 95. Wow. Um, it was a big uh, life lesson for me coming here to Camp Hask and learning what it means to be a grown-up and what it means to learn life lessons from everybody around you and take every day and enjoy it. Um, those were life lessons that people like Uri and other campers <laughs> teach me. <laughs> they teach you happiness, huh? Absolutely. How to keep a smile on your face. Smiling. What type of therapist are you, by the way? I'm an occupational therapist. All right, and the type of things you're doing on a daily basis would include? Um, we work on dressing skills. I've done a lot of uh, aquatic therapy with um, some of the campers here, especially something very important that's come to be. I've spoken to a whole bunch of families. Very often I work on dining room skills, not just the eating, the setting of the table. It's a beautiful thing when a camper can come home with a tangible skill that the family's excited about. Many families, every child has their own job. This one's in charge of cutting Shabbos toilet paper. This one's in charge of cleaning the floors. For every camper to have an opportunity to come home and say, my job is setting the Shabbos table or setting the weekday table is something that many parents and many campers have been thrilled to come back. And Hask is a place where you can just not teach it, but put it into motion and go into the dining room and help the waitresses. So the skills really carry over from one place, the therapy room, 
into the whole camp. And as you describe, it means so much more than that, the self-esteem and the ability to have accomplished something, reached a goal, et cetera, right. et cetera. Right. Uh, Dina Morris is here, therapist in the sensory room. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And what types of activities happen in the sensory room? So in Haskell, it's full of resources of all types, and they really want to mock- maximize the opportunity for the campers to benefit in each environment. So the sensory room, which is an environment that it's a very high tech room. It has a lot of different opportunities for campers to explore their environment in different ways to help regulate them, to help arouse some of them, relax others, for, to give them an opportunity to be in a zone where they could reach skills that they otherwise are having difficulty reaching in the rest of their day. So I work there as an occupational therapist to help show the counselors and train the staff in how to use the sensory inputs to help regulate those campers. You know, we alluded earlier to technology today. Yes. And you've probably, in your area, have seen a tremendous amount. It's really amazing. It's really, and it's amazing that the camp uses um, their resources to help advance a sensory room and provide different forms of input for the campers so each camper could really have what their systems need to be able to perform their day well. Yeah, and everybody's got their own program, right? The two of you know that just like the infirmary, the medical center, has to have a profile of the camper. You need a profile. What they're good at, what they need to learn, uh, what they're prone to enjoy, right? All this comes into being in the very first few days of camp. Yeah, and it's also very helpful to be able to provide that from a background where you meet a camper. I also have was started as a counselor, so I have the benefit also my camper. <laughs> I didn't ask you that, right? <laughs> my camper here, Rifki Blau, was her first summer in camp when she was nine years old. Rifki! And um, she was my camper, so... You get, to, you get to know the campers year to year, and you're able to then pass on that information to the counselors, and even campers that are new, and you just meet. So when you come in and you work in an environment where you already have, have exposure to different types of individuals, you're able to transfer that information to the, to the teachers and to the, to the other staff, so that way they could implement it in their bunks. Well, sounds like it's been a great summer so Amazing. far. Amazing. Continue to have a great summer. Amazing. Thank you both for joining me. Okay. Dina Morris, therapist in the sensory room here at Hask, and Yakir Wokstock. For 20 years, he's been at Camp Hask and um, works as a therapist here as well. Thank you to both of you. Where is Avi and where is Josh? Over here. Where? I don't see him. I'm Avi. Both of you guys are counselors? Yep. Or yep I am. Counselors. How many years? It's my second. Second summer. We have here Avi Kirstein. Where's Avi? That's I'm right here. here. From Charleston? I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. Weren't we just in Charleston the other day? Charlotte. Oh, we were in Charlotte. That's why I thought we were in Charleston. <laughs> <laughs> Which one's where? Oh, one's in North Carolina and South Carolina. Here we were in Charlotte. You ever oh, been to Charlotte? I have. Yeah. Multiple times. That's where we were last week. For about three hours till ZK said it's time to get on the plane. Let's go over it. Uh, <laughs> so you're from Charleston. Yes, sir. Which family did we know from Charleston? Was it the Saracens? Did we know the Saracens from Charleston? Is that where they were from? Do that is know? where they're from. Are they from there? Yeah, they're my know? neighbors. I play ping pong with them. Are you serious? Yes. See, so you know the Saracens. <laughs> I do. Very well. Um, how'd you first hear about Camp Hask? I heard about it in Yeshiva. I was in Yesoda Atora. Uh, a couple of years ago. In Israel. In Israel. And, and people are talking about Hask. Yeah, and people were talking about it, and I thought maybe I'll give it a try. Not that summer, but the summer after that. Right. Uh, I, w- I was away from home for nine straight months, so I wanted to spend some time with the family before college. So. And it's a good place for a Charleston kid? Uh, for y'all? Hask, absolutely. It is? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a good best. place for y'all? Be- best place on earth. <laughs> You're not acknowledging my, <laughs> my southern reference. So I'm frustrated. <laughs> Uh, that's uh, Avi Kirstein. How many campers do you have? I have four campers. How are they doing so far? They're doing splendid. You know, I took an informal poll of the four of them earlier, and they all four unanimously voted for you as best counselor at Camp Hask. What do you think of that, huh? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. You do I, agree. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you don't think there was anything wrong with their uh, with their assessment, huh? Great, great analysis by them. <laughs> great, great analysis. We also have here Josh. Is it Jaspin? Yeah. Josh Jaspin from the Upper East Side of Manhattan. The Upper East Side is represented here at Camp Hask. How many years have you been here? This is my second summer here. Have you been enjoying it? Yes, I have. What was your road to Hask? How did you first find out about it? Mitzvahari. From Mitzvahari. We mentioned Mitzvahari, Rabina earlier. Classic. You know, he's planning on being here this show. It's Mitzvahari. Hopefully, Mitzvahari. You hope to see him. Yes. How many years were you there? I was there for a year and a half. Very nice. Boy, oh, boy. They go to Israel. 
they shore themselves up academically, religiously, they come back and they do all this amazing chesed work at Camp Ash. What do you say to that, Josh? Quite a system, huh? I certainly agree. <laughs> you certainly agree. It's How many campers do you have, by the way? I have four. I'll tell you why I'm asking. Mm-hmm. Earlier today, I took an informal poll. All four of them unanimously said Josh was the best counselor here in Camp Ash. What do you think of that? Actually, all of them are nonverbal, so I don't know how they told you that. <laughs> I used the communication skills that I learned from the therapist and took an informal poll. <laughs> don't, 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 uh, don't invade on my, uh, on my routine here, if you don't mind. So there you have it. Avi and Josh, I hear both of you are doing great jobs. Uh, what's been your favorite day of the summer so far, aside from the visit of the guy from the radio? What's uh, been your favorite day so far? Well, uh, the first first week I actually had a different bunk, so now I'm a, you know, in my second first week with a, with a new bunk. Is that common? Is, where you would, uh, no, uh, some things uh, had to change right. in, in my bunk. Some campers went home when some were moved around. Wow. But, uh, n- I mean, that day was a very scary day, but since then every day has been better. Very nice. Baruch Hashem. Yeah. Are you introducing this uh, camper to us? or uh, no? no? Okay, just wanted to know. All right, thank you both very, very much for joining me. Avi and Josh, everybody. Thanks for having us. Charleston and Manhattan. Quite a combination, huh? I'm told Rabbi and Rebbitz and Willig are joining us. Do I have enough time? Do I have enough time to tell this audience how indebted I am to the Willig family? Or do I not have enough? Reb Judah, is there enough time left in the show for me to spend a few minutes talking about the incredible Willig family? Or do we have to immediately start talking about camp? Back <laughs> I should come back tomorrow, is right. Maybe we should play Levavos first. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a little Leva. Are you a, a proponent of Leva? I'm honest. Oh, I'm you're honest. You're honest. <laughs> okay. You cooperated with the project, For huh? Sure. Next time I see Rabavram Willig, I'll let him know that you are proudly <laughs> proclaiming how proud you were to uh, participate. Anyway, Rabbi Willig and uh, Rebetzin Ahuva Willig are here at Camp Hask enjoying this incredible summer. How are things so far? What's your evaluation? How would you describe the atmosphere in the first couple of weeks of camp? Uh, Nachum, it's been an amazing summer so far. Counselors are working hard. The staff is working so hard. The atmosphere is awesome. Look around. The sun's out. Everyone's excited and happy to be here. Well, it's sure. just an amazing place, and I'm sure the Rabbitson would agree. Rabbitson, we'll get to you in a moment. I just want to ask Rabbi Willig if uh, I, I'm not quite sure with everyone's assignments are here. Do you spend most of your day uh, with the camper and their education or with the staff and their education? How do, how do you uh, arrange your day, Rabbi Willig? It's a great question. Uh, mainly with the staff. We have amazing night shiur and people are flocking to come to speak. I speak uh, of Judah. Many other people are giving shiur. You have a lot of special guests here, don't you? Uh, I just really mentioned Rabbi Teller was here the other day. Teller, President Joel will be here this Thursday. Also, my gosh. Rabbi Glasser was here. Um, many of the great Rabbanim and Rabbanim from around the world. How coming. do you get all these people to visit here, I need to know. It's amazing. <laughs> Incredible. They all want to be here. Rabbi Judah, every one of them wants to be here. <laughs> Rabbi Tzanahuva Willig. Hi. How are you? Hello to you. How many years have you been associated with this amazing camp? So I've actually been here even before my husband as a therapist for eight wow. years. Eight summers. You did eight summers as a therapist. Yeah. My God. <laughs> Unbelievable. So you're a real veteran to say the least. So what's your assessment yeah. of this summer so far with all your experience? Amazing. Amazing. The ruach and the excitement, the counselors, the campers, everybody. It's just going strong and just gets stronger as the summer goes on. It is an amazing um, place, and uh, you must have a totally different perspective now than you had as a staff member, etc. And I know your staff now officially, but you know what I mean. Uh, years go by, you get a different perspective, and you see the way the the staff and the campers continue to progress each and every summer. It must give you an amazing feeling when you see all this. It's amazing, and the carryover you see from the counselors to what goes on in the bunk to what goes on in the dining room, you really see progress in a way that sometimes at home is almost impossible. It's just incredible. Um, so it's really just amazing to watch. How long ago did you join here as uh, the rabbi? It's my fourth year now. Fourth year. Yeah. You're probably wondering how you dealt with uh, all these years without being at Hask. That's really it. I you really want, you'd, you'd prefer to have been here 14 or 24 years, am I right? <laughs> 34. <laughs> 34 years. Well, we also have a curse that told um, Nachum to ask for, he, our son was a day camper here. So we have the parent perspective. And also. he did great here? He did amazing. He took his first steps here. Oh, that must have been unbelievable. Yeah. And a yeah. few summers ago, he decided that he no longer wanted to walk with canes. Mm-hmm. So one day he just said, that's it. Dad, Mom, <laughs> threw him away. But was it that surprising to you, seriously? It was. He made it to me. <laughs> You're serious. Yeah, it really was. It was amazing. It can't, it's part of the miracle that goes on here in Camp Ask. And I'm not joking. Yeah, it's real. <laughs> it's an amazing place. 
There are miracles happening here every day. The counselors, the staff, the therapists, they're really incredible. Do your amazing parents ever visit you here? <laughs> they do. What do they, they do. What do they say about this incredible place? <laughs> they're blown away. They're blown away. And they've been to some pretty good camps over the years. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and nonetheless, That's right. nonetheless, they are, I'm sure, very appreciative of this uh, incredible place. Uh, Rabbi uh, Yehuda and Rebetz and Ahuva will like, thank you to the both of you. Thank, thank you. you Have an amazing summer. An amazing summer. How much time do we have left here on this JM and the AM Wednesday? That's my question. What are we up to, ZK? 15 minutes? Um, I'm told that both Shia Dubin and Fagy Waxman are going to be joining me. Shia Dubin, I am told, is uh, an occupational therapist. Fagy Waxman, a feeding specialist. And get this. I am told that Shia Dubin, according to Reb Judah is the Rebbe of all therapists. What? The what? Rebbe of all therapists. You know how Hasidic groups have a Rebbe? Have Hasidic groups have a leader, a spiritual leader? I am told that Shia Dubin is in fact that for this group of therapists. What's your reaction to that? I'm very humbled by that. I can only imagine. <laughs> Do you give special brachas and things like that? Like, well, should I stick around after the show to speak to you, or it's not worth anything? I, I, <laughs> no more than any other Jew, I'm afraid. <laughs> when did you first walk at the camp, ask? This is my eighth summer. How did you, and, and I know he's somewhat exaggerating, at least according to you, but mm. how did you get to this position where you're looked upon as somebody who's a real mentor in the world of therapy here? Yeah, I don't know how I'm looked upon. I, um, I look for opportunities, and one of the things I enjoy about coming here is, um, we, as opposed to what I do the rest of the year, is... Um, I'm able to fill those gaps. I'm able to fill those opportunities. I'm able to use my creativity to help our campers. And, uh, and that's what really juices me up. That's what really makes me excited. It sounds like you're an exciting and creative person in general. Maybe that's what elevated you to this uh, status here at Cab Hess. I, I get to be me. They, they want the other <laughs> therapist to be as enthusiastic as you are. I, I, th oh, they, I work with a wonderful team. They're enthusiastic? I work with a wonderful team. And when, people, when people come in and count with me, say, I'm only as good as my team. And that includes all our wonderful counselors. Well, that's true, yeah. Nothing happens without the carryover. We have a great bunch of counselors here this year. Um, I work with some of the best therapists in the world and you sometimes in the, uh, outside of here you know OTs and PTs are very jealous and then speech what, what, what are they doing we share we share knowledge we share experience right. um, we, we, we back up each other it is just a wonderful place to work it's a great place to be I love your disposition Fagy Waxman anybody who's eating breakfast this morning yes and they're able to thank God please God take a spoonful of cereal and yes. put it in their mouth yes and they're able to drink a glass of milk or juice. They should be very thankful. They should be very, very, very thankful. Very, very thankful. Because you have seen situations on a yes. regular basis yes. where, unfortunately, people do not have the ability to do that. Fortunately, you're helping yes. them get to that stage yes. where they yes. can improve in that area. Yes. You, you must be hit with a million special cases here. We have, we have yes, almost <laughs> a million special cases. Um, every year, I have to say, we get even more and more. Um, as the population here becomes more medically fragile, we have more and more children on G-tubes that come who need a lot of oral stimulation. And I don't, I don't know if people realize that was something that was never here in the past, right? Yes. When I was a counselor here, we did not have any, any children on G-tubes. Right. I don't even think we had a feeding therapist. And excuse my ignorance, but they're yeah. fed, I assume, what does that mean? Directly through? Through their stomach. Through their stomach. Yes. The food goes directly through their stomach. That's how they get nutrition. Yes. Yes. And basically here, if they're, if they're allowed to, we give them tastes by mouth, things that they're, you know, at home they might not get. Um, Just you know, so they could appreciate the food. Yeah, appreciate the taste, be part of, be part of the social aspect of eating with everybody else. Um, you know, it's very important for parents also that their kids can do, you know, what other kids are doing. And even if they're just, you know, able to sit at a table and take a few tastes of food, that's very important to them. So Those of us... Uh you know, who are able to enjoy the things you just described, know how important the social experience is when it comes to eating. Yes. I yes. know it sounds silly, but it's almost silly. every almost every meeting we have. Yes. <laughs> Especially in the Jew in, in exactly. Jews. Everything surrounded around food. Anything so. from Nash to a formal dinner. Yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, So you can only imagine I see Zahava likes my description. <laughs> so you can only imagine how this dominates our yes. lives, and you want to try to help people. Even taking a sip of grape juice for Kiddush right. is, you know, 
that that can mean the world to parents. So we try our best, help each kid reach their potential, and you know that's what we do here. If only what you and I just discussed on the air gets people to either make a bracha better on their food 100%. or to just appreciate the next sip they take. A hundred percent. this conversation was 100%. worthwhile. By the way, you met your husband in Camp Hash. Yes, I in did. In case you didn't know that, I'm reminding you. Yes, I did. You. Thank you. How many yes. years ago was that? Many years ago. How many Hash, <laughs> how many hash couples are there now? <laughs> hundreds, right? It's in the hundreds, obviously. <laughs> Not thousands. Yeah. No. But certainly in the upper hundreds, right? Someone yes. should do a study of that one of these days. <laughs> yeah, in Tuchal is right. Um, or in this case, in Tuchal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, Shia Dubin and Faggy Waxman, everybody. Hey, a big shout out going out to uh, a big shout out going to Rebecca Strauss, who's a counselor here at Camp Hask. When you speak to your wonderful parents, please send them our best from all of us here at the Nachum Siegel Network. And JM in the AM. Reb Judah, who are you introducing us to, please? Ah, uh, she needs no introduction. Why don't you introduce yourself, Rachel? Okay, well, my oh, name is Rachel is. Gray. This is Rachel! You can't help but be happy when you speak to Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, why are you so happy? Tell me what about this world makes you so happy, Tell Okay, me. um, to be honest, my first time when I did came to camp, I was like 10 years old. Right. And ever since then, I had magnificent, beautiful counselors who I absolutely adore, and they're just the world to me. And I can imagine how special to be honored by having many counselors that I have in the past. I will say... Who's your counselor now? Well, I don't want to say my favorites, but... <laughs> oh, I need to know your favorite. Come on. Uh, no, no, no. Come on. The whole audience wants to know who your favorite but, is. Um, to be honest, um, <laughs> I really don't know who my favorite is. Give but, me one um, name of one of your counselors. Okay. My favorite that I had, should I say in the past, Yeah. was um, I would say, hmm. hmm. I'm also oh, gosh. Oh, wondering. gosh. Hmm. <laughs> Even Rebuta is wondering now. Hmm. What's your favorite? Oh, I have many favorites. I have many. Name one of them from you. All right, some of them are married. So one of them okay, was Shira one. Lankin. Who? Shira Lankin. Cheryl? Sh Shira. Oh, Shira. Lankin. Shira was a great counselor. She was like my all-time favorite. All-time <laughs> favorite counselor. Definitely. Wow. Okay. And how many years are you here? I was I'm I was ten when I came, so I am right now. I'm 27. What? <laughs> You're yes. here 17 years, my Yes, God. yes. And every year, you have no idea, I would be here until, like, I'm 120. Wow. I don't care. <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. All right, Reb Judah, uh, thank you, Rachel. Who thank else you, are we introducing? Itzik. Reb Itzik, how are you? Baruch Hashem. You want to give us a bracha? Oh, man. Oh, man is right. Everybody, oh man! Where's uh, Camper Rachel? Is Rachel here? Here, one second. Oh, here, this is Rachel. Right <laughs> I apologize. Herschel, want to say shalom aleichem? I meant Herschel. That's what I meant. Shalom aleichem. Uh, aleichem shalom. Hello to all of class. You got to watch the video, folks. Make sure you watch the video yeah. of this incredible day, please. Oh, what, a, what an amazing group, huh? What an amazing group of people. Reb Judah, you're surrounded by incredible people. I just want to just invite, uh, uh, invite the community to be a part of it. This is this Camp Hask is, 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 belongs to Klal Yisrael. We're doing this work on behalf of the community, on behalf of the Jewish people. It was founded four decades ago by the, by the Khan fam family. Uh, Rabbi and Mrs. Kanalea Mashalem, and uh, with his Chosovos and the incredible efforts of uh, a lot of people and an amazingly involved board uh, and a lot of good friends, thank God we're growing and we're growing and our needs are growing too. We're inviting everybody to please be a part of it. Come visit us, uh, visit us on August 2nd at the Camp Ask Experience. Uh, bring your families, alumni, friends, staff, families, everybody's invited. By the way, I just want to mention uh, during one of our conversations during the year, I think it was Jeremy who expressed uh, a dream on the radio. And everyone was like, you know, could that dream come true? And asking, sure enough, 
what it was that he wanted to accomplish that specific summer ended up happening. The point being that when people visit here, they're going to see that you're not just a bunch of big talkers. Take a look at that building right there. Number three, that's Binion Strasser. That, Seriously. Do you remember when that came about? Yeah. At the concert. Correct. Yeah, through the generosity that of the Strasser would be, family well, we, we, and our involvement we, we, we of our good friends, Rabbi we, Stern and uh, Rabbi Eisner. Good, good people. We mm -hmm. would now call that the most recent building in Canada. That's Kansas, brand right? new. This is it. Uh, Shmiel is right here. Shmiel saw, it, Shmiel, the, the, Shmiel right, saw it go up. What do you mean? <laughs> Shmiel took it down. <laughs> Shmiel took it down and then put it up. <laughs> so that's a pretty cool addition. That's, that's one it's moment. Centrally air conditioned, heated, so we can use it in the wintertime when we have Shabbatones up here. That's that somebody had a moment of inspiration and, and, made, we, and we, made a real difference. A real plan, difference. We plan to do another one. Amazing. We could do another 10. Let's go. Absolutely. I, I, also, want to, I also want to make mention. That Dove Hyken was here yesterday visiting us. Right, our great assemblyman. Great assemblyman, outstanding. He had a wonderful visit here. And also we had Sim Hefeld here on Sunday afternoon. Our great uh, state senator. State senator. Right? These are community leaders who understand the role that the camp plays in our community. Uh, and and there's, there's room for everybody to be involved. Everybody is invited to see the magic of Camp Hask on Sunday, August 2nd. Guess what? Not only is there an exciting carnival and a catered lunch and a family softball game and pony rides and bunk presentations, but Hask today has announced that it will feature the one and only Avraham Freed. <laughs> That's happening on August 2nd. Shmiel, you'll be here that day, right? Of course I will. And you wanted to add something. What do you want to say? I, wanna, I wanted to add, I wanted to end uh, my comments for saying, like, saying the following. The Mashgir of Matisio Salman has graced us with his presence uh, for the last five summers <laughs> on Friday, Erev Shabbos Nachmu. His, words, his ending words to us was, was always, when Mashiach is going to come, he's going to come to Camp Hask first. But don't forget, I'm your friend. Take me along. <laughs> I wonder if Matisio Salman ever dreamt that that would be his most quoted quote about Camp Hask. It's amazing. amazing. And it's incredible. What it's, and we know that when it is repeated, it inspires people to give, to participate, to be part of this incredible with, camp. With all so. the chesed that goes on here. It's impossible that Mashiach should not make this his first stop. Amen. Pretty Zach Klal, God of Torah. Uh, again, the information on the August 2nd event is experience.camphask.org. Experience.camphask.org. My thanks to Stan in our studio, to ZK, of course, responsible for audio and video here. Thank you to Jamie Turkel. Thank you to uh, an incredibly produced show by Miriam L. Wall. Like an incredibly produced show today. I'm going to thank her very, very much. And, of course, to all of our hosts here at Hask, because all the campers and all the staff are our hosts, but led by Rib Judah, of course. And I thank you, and I thank everybody for being part of this thank incredible Thank you for coming. Experience. Thank you for coming. Great to be here at Camp Hask. Achenu Israel and Achim Achem, our brothers and sisters in Israel, we are with you. It's your favorite America's one and only Jewish moments in the morning radio program. Heard on listeners sponsored WFMU East Orange, WMFU Mount Hope, Rockland County at 91.9 on the FM dial. Around the world on the web, JM and the AM. Oh. And that wraps up an incredible visit to Camp Pass. Tomorrow we'll get back into the regular routine of JM and the AM and certainly talk about the news of the day as we get closer to the end of the week. And, um, and we will talk more about uh, uh, current events and the news of the day. Have a fabulous Wednesday, everybody. Tomorrow morning, 6 a.m., we start again. From Camp Hask, Nahum Siegel reminding you, remember the past, live the present, and trust the future.